Welcome back to Bowls Mount Monganui for the men's fours final, the culmination of the Somerset National Fours. And it is Sheldon Bagri Howley, Caleb Hope, Jamie Hill, and Gary Lawson, the skip up against Chad Grant, Calvin Scott, Lance Pascoe, and Mike Kernahan. The battle of the Black Jacks and Gary Lawson and Mike Kernahan, both players who are multiple national titles. Gary Lawson, in fact, attempting to win a record extending 14th. And we are underway. We are now playing the second end of 18 in the men's fours final. And Gary Lawson drawing a shot to pick up a single on the opening end, leading Mike Kernahan 1-0. Brenton Vanisseroy with you in commentary alongside Kevin Hicklin. Very good afternoon, Kevin. Well, we saw a pretty impressive performance in the women's final from Sandra Keith. And very much looking forward to this one when you've got so many good players on show. Well, we certainly have. And, you know, the Mike Kernahan side with uh, Chad Grant leading, of course. Chad Grant won the New Zealand Trust Open singles a couple of years back. Now playing at the Tarrant Point Club uh, in Sydney with Kelvin Scott, of course, former New Zealand title holder. Lance Pascoe, the well-performed player out of Canterbury, and Mike Kernahan, the current Blackjack and world champion uh, Fours player. And what more can you say about Kernahan? He's won in all disciplines. And up against, of course, Sheldon Bagley Howley and Caleb Hope, two of the young up-and-coming stars out of the Gore Club, but way down the deep south. Jamie Hill, of course, who has already won a couple of national titles and been a former Blackjack, unavailable at present. And Gary Lawson skipping, and what more do we have to say anything about Gary Lawson? 13 New Zealand titles, two world champions, and of course will be part of that New Zealand side in the world championships in uh, in May on the Gold Coast. So let's say, yeah, uh, Brendan, it's a star-studded lineup that we've got here. As this is the last event, of course, of the Somerset National Fours. Interestingly as well, a bit of a subplot. Uh, Gary Lawson, of course, uh, the captain really of the Elmwood Park Saints from Bowls 3-5, teaming up with two members of the Gore Rams and Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagri Howley and going up against two of his Elmwood Park teammates, Calvin Scott and Lance Pascoe. Sure is, and uh, it's interesting as well, of course, that uh, yeah, Calvin, Calvin Scott and Lance Pascoe will be for, part of the uh, Canterbury side, of course, in the intercentre as well, uh, where they'll team up. But we're in for a, I think that we're in for a great final here, as we see now Lance Pascoe in the blue shirt playing down towards the port end, as Brennan said, one end gone, and we saw Gary Lawson, the jack got moved, and we saw Gary Lawson draw pretty well down to the ditch board, and Alex Reed, yeah, marker, will tell us that it is two to. The Gary Lawson side, so Alex Reid, Chris Dorland, Black, the Bowls New Zealand employee, doing a sterling job for us. And we're playing a pretty much a three-quarter length head. And we saw in the semi-finals, of course, Gary Lawson defeat Mike Carroll and Mike Kernahan defeat, defeat Shannon McElroy. And we all just seen, of course, certainly played all disciplines and has won New Zealand titles and all disciplines. would be happy if he could get second shot and uh, sort of reduce the damage. Of course, so both of these gentlemen, Gary Lawson and Mike Kerner, so may have cut the count significantly here. But this He's leading. Great to see Gary Lawson giving the, taking these young fellas on board and giving them their opportunity to win the New Zealand title as we see this first bowl of Chad Grant and also is just going to break underneath the Bagley Howley bolt and it's underneath it for shop and you'll hear Gary Lawson saying to Sheldon Bagley Howley a wee bit more grass, a bit more green green running around about close to 17 and a half, 18 seconds a bit of breeze there as well so it's So Mike Kernahan saying to his lead Chad Grant, you need a wee bit more, bit more green to get that draw towards the head. Because so if you're under green on the starweed around the middle of the green now, who's trying to find a, a worm there, Mike Kernahan's going to go up, up and give it that. We don't want you here. Think of this seagull certainly wants to stay and is not that keen on flying away. And oh, that's really
Yeah. So is Mike Gunn actually going to catch him? I think he's <laughs> trying to make friends, actually. <laughs> so there's a bit of... <laughs> Unfortunately, off screen now. He's still chasing this this seagull. And it's, it's away. Come back onto it's the gone. Top, over top towards, the, over towards the port of Tauranga. It's gone. Disappeared. I don't know if Mike Colonel. It's also good to see, thanks to Ben and Tamara, that there's a number inside the club who are actually watching the finals live on the big screen in there. Kelvin Scott now with his second bowl on this, the third end. Holding two was the call from Alex Reed as we watch this bowl breaking down towards the head. Has to get past as it won't quite make it, I don't think. Alex Reed. Is it going to fall in and be a touch shot? Hold up for the time being. So, Gary Dawson saying to Jamie Hill, you still play down there with weight. You can just see the shadow on previous shot you can just see the shadow of the jack so it's not quite touching no, no Gary Lawson I think he thinks this bowl is up he's trying to urge the Jamie Hill bowl up and it's going to the whole thing on star wheat it's not right up above us moving around to that westerly quarter yeah, the sun almost had the players backs as they play from the port end Gary Lawson now on the mat the skip Early lead in this men's fours final here at the Somerset Nationals. He loves the big occasions, does Gary Lawson. He loves the finals, he loves the big encounters, and he goes through. The areas have got the weight. No, it hasn't. This is a yard of weight. Obviously, it was on a good track, wasn't it? Because they were interested. Certainly on a good line. So, saying the last ball of Mike Kernhans, in fact, this fourth shot. So, you might have heard Jamie Hill saying to Gary Lawson, get two or three rolls onto that front bowl. So, on the mat now is Lawson. He'll reach with weight. Player with the point shiv Pirates and bowls 3-5. So Mike Kernahan on the board in this men's final here at the Somerset National Fours at Bowls Mount Monganui. 4-2. It is now Gary Lawson leading Mike Kernahan after three of the 18 ends. What is the culmination of this tournament? Already seen Sandra Keith, Claire Hendra, Selena Smith and Taylor Bruce crowned women's champions. Who will join them in the men and lift the Dominion Shield, which has been reintroduced as the trophy for the winning Fours team? And it started very impressively in the opening end. You got a toucher and one within a foot, first two bowls. This one short on the fourth end. And a great first bowl, though, from Sheldon Bagri Howley as he slides just to the right of the jack. Chet Grant, Ridgey from Rotorua. And uh, <coughs> now one of the, I'd call him one of the bowls nomads <laughs> that sort of moves between New Zealand and Australia. Trying to get that draw back towards that centre line. And it certainly has a good draw line of weight. Yeah, mate, just going that? to finish on the jack high side slightly wider. So Bagley Halley will now go play up. Man who restores vintage era. Good second. Caleb Hope. Oh, looks like he's growing a bit of a mullet out, out the back. Obviously, very, very synonymous with Southland as well. Are you getting that ready for the next Bowl 3 5 season? Not sure. But the mullet is sort of a bit of a Southland uniform, isn't it? Brenda, that's sort of quite common down. Yeah, well, I would, I would say so. I'd say probably in your neck of the woods, Talanaki would be. And of course, his partner, pretty handy player as well, Mandy Boyd. Mandy 
got beaten earlier on in the fours, but Mandy Boyd, of course, bronze medalist at the 2014 Commonwealth Games. And she's watching on as well with Sister Angela and the, and the family as well, cheering on Lance Pascoe, no doubt. Yeah, the, the, the babies are out on display. So, Jamie Hill running in towards the jack. Still going to be low of it. And still one is an indication from Alex Reid to the Garrows. It got the ball with one ball wide of that target area. So, Mike Kernahan will be <clears throat> desperately trying to get another ball on the head. Trailing 4 2 after three of the 18 ends. And this is the last event here at Somerset National Falls here at Mount Monganui. Yeah, it's been a very enjoyable four days. Last couple of days bringing you our broadcasts from post section play. Fantastic weather right throughout Brendan, hasn't it? Although we've only been here for the last couple of days, but the earlier days of section play, I know, they also had. You know, Great weather. John McBeth saying to me that it was you know, couldn't get enough fluids and it was really, really, really hot. As we see now, Mike Kernahan looks as though this is going to be defeated. Dean Elgar. And then went on to defeat Shannon McElroy in the other semi final. Gary Lawson defeating Mike Carroll of Stokes Valley. Fair effort that was from Gary Lawson there to just try and sit on the second. Try and make it two, potentially three for Lawson. No doubt Lawson will try and play that same shot with his final bowl. So what can Kernan come up with in the interim? Playing on his forehand, he wasn't too far away with his last one either. He Looking for that movement to the bowl. Oh, an exhibition there. Beautifully done. Takes out the shot bowl, adds to the count, and that is two for Gary Lawson. Wonderfully played. There was nothing really Mike Kerner could do, but just stand and applaud, and he does exactly that for Gary Lawson. He says, well done, Gary as you retain the jack and the mat. And it's 6-2 now after four of the 18 ends. Gary Lawson leading Mike Kernan. Yeah, he just played that yard, that controlled yard of weight up through the head to dislodge the sh shot bolt of Mike Kernahan, who had Kernahan playing on that backhand side. And applause from Kernahan. So it's just slightly low of the jack, but certainly pretty close proximity. Bagley Harley now. Second fours final, of course, that Sheldon Bagley Harley has played it. Played in the final in Dunedin a couple of years ago, in fact, against Gary Lawson. He was skipped. On his backhand. Change of hands here for Caleb Hope. Lawson saying draw down he could in here on the forehand, don't want to touch anything. Open draw there on the forehand. So just heard Gary Lawson say be a bit heavy, and it is. But stays up on that ditch board. So here is now Kelvin Scott trying to reach down to the shot bowl. Looks to be on a good line. Just not going to pull back to the shot bowl. Just goes by it. So a lot of the bowls obviously similar colour. Slightly hard to see, especially with the light all over them. But the, the bowl just below the 
Jack, shot bowl of Caleb Hope out to the right hand side as the Chad Grant bowl. And that one comes well short Jamie. of Jamie Hill. Certainly was. Wouldn't be happy with that. So Lance Pesco now play down on his backhand. These bowls are a bit more charcoal, aren't they? Rather than Mr. Black of Jamie Hills. Not sure if that's going to run all the way either. It's not. It's going to pull up in front of that short pole. Does that Jamie Hill? Come on, give us a good one. Hold in one shot. Jamie Hill seemed to get that bowl away with more weight on the forehand, and it's not going to. See Lawson now urging that bowl. Yeah, mate. So the a yard is the call from Mike Kernan to Lance Pesco. It was a yard of weight on that backhand side and it's on its way. Lance Pesco of course yet to win a New Zealand title so he'd dearly love to get a win here. This bowl just creeps up and, and X in fact ran into the Sheldon Bagley Howley bowl tipped it over and may have made two of that and it has just a touch on the bowl made two of it yeah, the problem that Mike Kernahan's getting early on in this game, Brenton, is that he just can't get the front to give him the, the, some, some shots around the head. And, uh, you know, there's short bowls and just not really enabling to put then the pressure on the Lawson side. The pressure's on Kernahan end after end. And as good a bowler as he is, that takes its toll. And exceptionally challenging for... Yeah, certainly the front end for Gary Lawson, starting the, the stronger of the two foursomes after the first five ends have been played by the front three. Now it's up to the skips on this fifth end. Lawson trying to add to the count. He comes around that wide bowl of and does Chad count. Grant, and it will count. So it's three now. So the bowl, which is just below the jack here, just to the right below it is the bowl of Caleb Hope. Got the bowl just in above it, which is the white and purple bowl of Sheldon Bagri Howley. And now the orange bowl, burn orange bowl out to the, the right hand side, Gary Lawson. Then above that is the closest Kernahan bowl, and that being the bowl of Chad Grant. So this becomes a big bowl now, big end for Mike Kernahan. Three down on the head. Wow, it could make quite a Big change in this game, isn't it? If he drops a number here. So drawing on that backhand side. See Lance Pesco uh, looking at the head as it's coming down towards the head now. Has to come back inside those bowls to get to where he needs to get to. And he's certainly drawn in amongst them. Whether he's made shot, one down. I just saw Kelvin Scott. And that's also Alex Reid indicating that as well. It's uh, one to Sheldon Bagley Howley and Gary Lawson. So a good save there by Mike Kernahan. Not a lot of room to draw really there, Brennan, because those uh, balls are fairly close. That Kernahan being the astute and very, very accomplished draw player that he is. Yeah, so we can assume it's obviously beaten the Gary Lawson bowl and also beaten the Sheldon Bagley Howley bowl. That Caleb Hope bowl down the bottom, just below the jack, is the shot. I saw Galvin Scott very, very quickly indicate that we're just the one down. So Lawson persevere now on that backhand. Very warm conditions here at Mount Monganui. The sun's pouring into the commentary box, certainly all over you now, Kevin. You'll be nice and warm. Yeah, well, at 4, 4.22 and there's still there's plenty of warmth out there in the sun for sure as we watch the Gary Lawson bowl. I question that weight though. No, it hasn't got the weight. So there's not a lot that Kernahan really can do. And he's got Lance Pasco to have a good look at the head. To Lance Pasco will. Kelvin Scott now having a look. Must be pretty close. They're trying to work out the second or we'll see in a moment. Kelvin Scott might. No, he's not indicating. Oh, it's very, tight, mate. very tight was the call. Now 
as Brent had said we don't know if that's very tight for the shot or for the second possible county in bowl. Well, they're coming back to the Bagri Howley bowl here. You think it's going for the second, isn't it? Well, looking and monitoring the way, that, the way they look, and, and we, we're pretty certain, aren't we, that the, the Caleb Hope bowl is the shot past bowl. the Jack is the shot bowl. Could be wrong, of course. There we go. Oh, he says he favours us, Kelvin Scott now. So whether that's for second or, oh, that would be or for the shot. Who knows? If that's a shot, then that's a, a big that turnaround, isn't it? Certainly is. It's a you know, that's a big bowl from Mike Kernahan. Kelvin Scott I'd say he's pretty good on the old eyes. He's been around a long time. As we see this second bolt of Mike Kernahan's and who's got it anyone got a measure? Oh yes, Jamie Hill, that's most unusual. So Sheldon Bagri Howley's picked on the mat, so he thinks that's an got, that's an indication the from their point of view, isn't it? So I think they're measuring for the second. Well, they've already taken the Caleb Hope bowl out, so it is the measure for second. One. Yeah, it's just the one. So another one to Gary Lawson. Seven two it is now after five of the eighteen ends, but they were holding three. Kevin Eklund before Certainly that were. lovely draw from Mike Kernan. So that really made a big difference because, you know, we could have seen them jump to a 9-2 lead, which certainly is challenging after five of the 18 ends. But 7-2, still, you know, Lawson has got that very handy five-shot buffer. But as we know, things can change very, very quickly. We see Sheldon Bagley Harley and, of course, Caleb Hope. This would be their first New Zealand title. They're endeavouring to win, so there's a... Uh, a first in the, of course, for Chad Grant, Grant and Lance Pasco, and a first for Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagley Howley. So it's a big day for these guys. As we see, the Sheldon Bagley Howley bolt is going to go by with a bit of weight on it. So I think Mike Kernan certainly wants to see Chad Grant when these opportunities arise. He wants them to try and dominate the head by getting that first bowl as close to the jack as possible. Oh, he'd like to have a chance to not be playing catch up with me. Absolutely. Because that's what's been happening in the last few ends. That's the reason why they're in this five shot hole. And this is a good first up bowl from Chad Grant doing exactly what you're talking about and getting a touch up. Yeah, that's what Mike Kernan needs. The heads to start like that and hasn't been happening to date. Course, but we also know that we can the attacking shots from the Lawson combination. Gary Lawson, Jamie Hill, they've certainly got a full bag of shots. As we see this bowl of Bagley Harley's breaking down towards the head. It's gonna got a touch in fact onto the shot bowl. Still be shot to the Kernhan side, but the good thing is it's moved the jack out, brings it into a drawing position whereas before it was virtually locked right on top of the jack. There's now room for them to draw as we see now Chad Grant now on his forehand with Gary Lawson leading 7-2 as we come to the the sixth of 18 ends Very good, Mike. and Mike Kern will be happy with that and behind the head and that's two shots to the Kernahan side so Caleb Hope will immediately go to his backhand Playing up towards the port end here at the at Mount Monganui. Obviously, they have to change their line with the Jack having moved out to the right as we see it here on our camera. So it's an adjustment. He's made a pretty good fist of it here on a pretty good line. Just a sh bit short and weight, but fair effort. Still two, as indicated by Alex Reed. Kelvin Scott really chance to put the pressure on these players of course so as we know Brenton especially the likes of Lawson and Kernahan they can change heads around so of the highest quality and that will more than likely make three but yeah that so Lawson saying to yeah, Caleb Hope, you come down here with which you pick your weight. And it's on its way pretty quick on the back end, on the drive, trying to get to the county bowls. Got one. Got 
two. Got two, in fact. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good result. Gary Lawson will be happy with that. Pretty quick on the drive is Caleb Hope, as we've seen in the Bowls 3-5 and other events. So here is Kelvin Scott playing his second bowl. Doesn't need a second invitation to play the drive, that's for sure. No, he does not. Executed very well on that occasion. Doing exactly what his skip was asking. So it's two shots, and here's the call down to Jamie Hill. I like the idea of trying to get the jack into the ditch on the backhand. That's what he will try and do, try and run the jack into the I think Jamie jack. Hill liked it. He didn't like it early on on the draw. So, same to Lance Pesco as Mike Kernahan on that forehand side. See if you can turn that bowl over as well, get it into the head. Gary Lawson got the advantage, of course, of that back bowl. So, he's now Lance Pasco playing his first on the 16. He's going to come back enough. Sits inside and around the bowl. He'll certainly go again. Oh, Jamie Hill. Daring to try and get the jack, get the jack in the, into the ditch. Got something, got one of the, got the Lance Pasco bowl that was shot. Dislodged that right out of the head. So Lance Pasco will try now and repeat that. Give them three shots when they change over. And we've seen the aggressive nature of Gary Lawson, the skip, isn't he? When he's behind, he's not afraid of saying, I want some weighted efforts here. So uh, he drives. He, he'll back himself. There's Lance Pasco and a draw. Yet another and behind. And that would just, the way how that bowl's now situated, it just uh, it makes Lawson's mind up very quickly of the shot that he's going to play. Oh, it's like a chess match this, this end, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and we'll draw, we'll drive, we'll draw, we'll drive. Just very, very few misses. Gary Lawson just turned the mat over. And that tells you what weight that you're going to play with a wee bit more weight than what Jamie Hill played, I would think. It's a normal call. And he certainly is. He's on the drive as Lawson going for the jack. And is wide of the head. Very much wide of the head. Not happy with that at all. Head stays down. Gary Lawson. He knows that this could be a big chance for Kernahan right back in the match, they're holding three and Mike Kernahan yet to play these two bowls, one remaining for Gary Lawson so three was the indicated by Alex Reid, you can see him behind the Alex, our, our lollipop man, he's standing right up behind the scoreboard you can see Mike Kernahan now on the forehand holding three shots as Brendan said Trailing 7 2, Gary Lawson. Got one bowl left on this, the 16, and we know that he'll be he'll be driving for sure. And this bowler, Ken, has, is coming in behind and will also count. Uh -oh. Here now is Gary Lawson. This is a big bowl. So important. He executes here, Gary Lawson. Otherwise, Kernahan is right back into this final. It's on its way. He's on his haunches. He likes it. You know, when he's on his haunches, he likes it. Gets the jack and kills it. Kills it. And we'll replay it. So, Mike Kernahan, after all that effort, a well established head by his side. They've had to give it up. That's replayed. Gary Lawson down four on the head, executes brilliantly, and we're going to have another go, but no need to pick up the bowls, boys, we'll just play back the other end, so they're going to play from the, the port end, and the score of course remains 7-2, and we will replay the sixth end, well executed kill by Gary Lawson, Kevin Hicklin. Certainly was big bowl from Gary Lawson, and you know with Lawson when he lets the bowl, when he delivers the bowl, when you see him down on his haunches, you know he's close, and you heard the the shout from him, Jack, want the Jack clean back into the ditch, and 
15. Yeah, he could well have been five down after that if he misses that gap because Mike Kern has had a bowl left. A uh, good opening bowl here from Sheldon Bagley Harley draws right on top of the jack. Mike Kern in there. Just get back to your work, boys. And it's Chad Grant now. Trying to get down to the Sheldon Bagley Harley bowl. As it went by us here. It looked to be short, and it duly is short. Extra sun protection for Kevin Hicklin as Ben and Tamara have had to move the whole tent for the prima donna commentator that is <laughs> Kevin Hicklin. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's a, yeah, it's the size of a circus tent as well. <laughs> well exactly, it's, it's usually, usually would take 10 men. <laughs> it's a big move. Ben and Tamara. Uh, they can do everything, they, they can do it all. But good thing we, <clears throat> we've got a good view of the screen as well now, which is very good. No, all seriousness, it's good to keep out the sun, which, as you say, Kevin, is still very hot. It is, and of course, we've got the you know, the general manager of the New Zealand Cancer Society, Mike Kernan, out there playing. So you yeah, know. he was shaking his head, seeing how much sun was <laughs> was falling on you. He would not have allowed that. Slip, you know, slip, slap campaign. So it's the Sheldon Bigley Howley Bolt. Has shot, and I've marked it down at 15. Is that going to be the telling end in this 18 end final of the Somerset Men's National Fours? So Mike Kernahan saying to Kelvin Scott, just beat the bowl. Not worrying about trying to get the shot at this point, trying to get the second shot and then something to work on. Owen Scott of the Elmwood Club in Christchurch. Watch the bowl now, breaking down towards the head. And how's the weight going to be? Is it going to get what? Need an, another metre of weight to get the result that Mike Kernham wanted. Okay, of hope now. Trying to build more pressure. Gary Lawson standing, watching, and he's done just that. Of course, what's also done now is he's given a wee bit of a sort of shoulder feather opportunity for the Kernahan side to get down to where that bowl is and work off the bowl to get to the jack. So Kelvin Scott now with trying to get another bowl on the head for Mike Kernahan. And he's gone through to the back. So obviously, Kernahan, we're going to see some attack. Yeah, I think we saw a well done, didn't we? Kernahan. Tamara here's doing a, trying to do a building job on the tent, trying to. I'm sure one of these gentlemen over here will come and whack that stake in for Tamara. That's, yeah. She's pretty good, but. That's the farmer drive, driving the stake. <laughs> so, team effort here at Poles Mount Monganui. So, Lance Pascoe now will try and reach up on that forehand plane with weight as we anticipate he would do. Trying to get the split to the bowls. And got one at the outside bowl of Caleb Hopes. Got two, you'll hear that call from Gary Lawson. But that's the only end so far, really. Brenton, on the, of these six ends, that, like, that replay of that where, where, that we saw, the Kernahan side get some domination on, on, on the head. And, you know, so that's why the response now from the Lawson side is uh, very, very good because, you know, they were definitely four down with one to come. Gary Lawson with a drive managed to kill the end, get a replay of that end. So again, Lance Pascoe endeavouring to 
get to the shot bowl. He's That's close. He got it. Close. He got the got bowl both. out. Got both out. So now it's a, a drawing game for the skips because there's only what four bowls left on the rink, I think. Yeah, there's one deep bowl left. Six bowls left. But yeah, it's the ones you can see, and then there's. So you'll see two just and pretty much right at the bottom of the screen. You can see one. He's right on the monitor there. now. You'll see the replay, and as Brendan rightly said, collected both of the Lawson bowls. So here is now Gary Lawson to play his first bowl on the replay of this the sixth end on his backhand. And Alex Reed indicating two, two Kernahan's holding, and. This bowl, Lawson's is going to hang out on that wide side, and still two to the Mike Kernahan side. So very good drive there from Lance Pasco. With his first bowl, he removed one, and then with his second bowl, drove the shot bowl and took out the other Gary Lawson bowl as well. So Kernahan now with about a metre at least to draw it. Another counter, and then Gary Lawson will play his last bowl on this replay <coughs> of the 16 of the final of the men's fours here at the Somerset National Bowls at Mount Monganui as we watch this bowl of Mike Kernahan break in towards the head or sit in behind it. That's a counter. That's three now that they're holding, so... Saw on the, the first attempt at the 16, they were holding all the cards, and Gary Lawson forced to come up with a big drive to replay this. And Lawson's four got a good start off the front, but then Pasco with a great execution of the drive. Now, can Lawson cut the count here? It's a fair effort, but it's going to land alongside his other one. Just stays out on that right side. Right aside, so and Alex Reed still indicating three. So uh, this has been now turned around. A good comeback in now for the combination, the Mike Coonan combination. Because the replay hasn't worked out too bad because they, they were holding four at the time that Gary Lawson killed it. And now a chance to make it four Well, Lan Mike Coonan. You know, if they get the four, Lance Pasco really turned that into a six-shot turnaround um, from that head. So you know, well done by the number three for Mike Coonan. As we now see Mike Coonan now on his backhand, as indicated by Alex Reed, definitely holding three down on the backhand side. Is Mike Kernahan looks to be on a pretty good line as it's now going to break underneath the front bowl and it's going to break the has to get cleanly underneath that bowl, the front bowl. Will it? We'll wait to see what they indicate. Well, Alex Reed's got the four ready. Well, it says that's the indication from him. One, two. Now, are those two closer? Three. Taken away. <laughs> Jamie Hill, he's very nonchalant, isn't he? Just sort of, <laughs> yeah, have that one near yeah, that one, and yeah, perhaps this one. Four. Four confirmed. So, a big end for Mike Kernahan. 7-6. Seven, 7-6 six. Seven, six now after the replayed sixth end. So we are... A third of the way through this men's final here at the Somerset National Fours. Just one shot the difference. Well, the other thing to, to take into account here, Brendan, as well, that the last two ends, we've actually seen the Coonahan side holding eight shots. So Gary Lawson got the kill on the previous one, replay, and was holding the sh head well until Lance Pascoe played that uh, very, very good shot. Gary Lawson then couldn't recover from it with the draw. And Mike Kernan capitalised on it and drew two, and we now won the difference. Yeah, well done by Mike Kernan's four after being four up. They thought they had a big opportunity, but then when Gary Lawson killed it, they managed to sort it all the second time round. As uh, we see now, the first bowl of Chad Grant's falling. Very, very short. He'll be disappointed with that. Playing up towards the port end here at Tauranga. Sun moved away. Temperature dropped slightly. And 
as we have our road to the men's fourth final here. As you can see, obviously, Gary Lawson and Mike Kernahan, how they have made it here. Gary Lawson with a win over Scott Roberts. That was in the quarterfinals last night before beating Mike Carroll in the semi finals early this afternoon. Whereas Mike Kernahan arguably had a, a tougher run to make it to the final. He had the defending champion and Mike and uh, Dean Alger uh, to play in the quarterfinals and that was this morning and he beat the defending champion a reversal of uh, last year's final Nine Eye Bowling Club and then took down his Black Jacks teammate and Shannon McElroy in the semi-finals to get to where they are now playing the seventh end of the men's fours final here at Bowls Mount Monganui. Straight away, we have seen Jack Grant fall short with his first bowl because the Jack, in fact, is virtually on the two metre mark. Jack Grant's second bowl, in fact, went into the ditch. And still plenty of room, though. Good metre for Kelvin Scott. A very strong, a good draw player is Kelvin Scott. The Cantabrian, of course, will be playing in the Canterbury Minda Centre side. Was part of the Elmwood Park Bowl 3 5 side as we watch the Golden Scott Bowl break towards the head, ran into the very short bowl of Chad Grants. And that actually looked to be on a pretty good line, actually, Brendan, that bowl of Kelvin Scott's. Well, the only positive thing so far for the first three bowls is that Sheldon Bagri Halley hasn't got one on the jack yet. Correct, and you know, I just bowl now of Caleb Hopes. This is going to be the closest one would think, and that's as uh, but now there is one certainly is. And that's three, as indicated very quickly there by Alex Reid. And I'm sure we'll see Mason. We mate, it's a call from Mike Kernan just draw us one close. That's all he wants. I want to score, you know, like that good four that they just scored, and then get into trouble the very next end and drop. A cluster of shots as we watch this bowl here of Kelvin Scott. He's trying to urge this bowl up to the, get to the second shot. Has to get past the front though. He's going to get past the front bowls and get second shot. Time again, Mike. May well, not sure. We'll see what Alex has to say with the <laughs> lollipops. And, but a moment. It yeah, might make it two. Might have, yeah, it cut, it, two. cut it to two rather than cut it to one. Uh, interesting that he decided to go on that forehand side when there's a bit of the short stuff to negotiate. I definitely thought he would have been playing there as Caleb Hope's playing that backhand arc which is there and then we've got to st yeah there's the shot now at Lance Pascoe straight away Mike Kernahan saying to him now there is a shot there there's a good V into the head just get your green right and you can sit on that shot bulb or move the jack don't know about the weight though as it goes past me here and I see Lance Pesco with the hands. He certainly doesn't like it as well and in fact it's more likely it actually didn't even come alive that particular bowl of Pesco's so he'd be really disappointed with that. So on that basis it would be three shots that, this, that they're holding now with the Lawson side and trying to encourage the Jamie Hill bowl to come draw back in and that's three and I'm sure we'll see Lance Pascoe a man trying to get the second shot would help Mike Kernahan as it goes past us here in the commentary position looks to be on a better line how's the weight now though is it going to get all the way trying to break down towards the head and it's not going to in fact it's about four or five feet short they be disappointed with that I'm sure we're going to see Mike Kernahan. Hard to get the second shot. I'm pretty sure we might see Kernahan. He might attack for the jack on the backhand. So here's now Jamie Hill. He can get this plane to get the four back. And he got that nice feather off the short bowl of Lance Pascoe's. Now sits alongside what is the shot bowl? So big pressure now. Brendan on Mike Kernan as they change over. Oh, he's got nothing with a Five. Five shots. I think this is four. Oh, four it is. My apologies. But he's got nothing close, so that's the, 
that's the problem for, for Mike Kernan as he makes his way to the mat. He's picked up four on the on the previous end to get right back into this final the culmination of these Somerset National Fours. So here is now Mike Kernahan trying to, as Brendan said, trying to get a ball close is the option that came for Kernahan. And that too is going to pull up short. Big trouble here. Man, I really question Brendan. Yeah, was he better to have a flick at the jack then? Might have got a couple of the balls out of it and get the jack. Trying to dead draw that is it's really challenging to that two metre mark. And as you rightly say, his team's given him absolutely nothing this end. Yeah, I suppose that that's his strength though, isn't it? Oh, it is his strength. He's a draw player, so I think he's playing to his strength there. Completely understand what you're saying, but I think Mike Kernan goes, uh, it's, it's my game, it's the draw. I back myself to, to get inside there and cut the count. Sure. Get another opportunity, but Gary Lawson, of course, will have the final say on the seventh end. And here's Lawson certainly with the weight as it went past us, giving it that opportunity. And he's in fact ran into the the shortest Mike Kernahan bowl. We'll see whether that's made. Well, it'll still be I think a it's number. Made it five. Is it? Is it made it five or is it still four? Alex Reed's working out. Yeah, it's still four. So, Mike Kernahan walking back to the mat. And I just wonder whether Lawson was actually trying to move the jack as well, thinking that Kernahan might play that shot because. All the back bowls, of course, belong to the Lawson combination. So here is Mike Kernahan now. And he's playing with that weight to get the jack into the ditch. That's what he's endeavouring to do is Kernahan. And he got the oh, kill. Kills it. Oh, well executed. It isn't his game, as we said. He's around now for his draw play, but... He went with that drive and he got the result. One result was getting the jack in the ditch. The next best result was the kill and he did it. Interesting though, we see now Lawson saying, no, we're going to play back this way again. It felt that we... So you'll see the jack being delivered again to the two metre mark. So forcing all the players to pick up their bowls. Yeah, it's, it's, I, was surprised. I thought... Uh, Mike Coonan might have attempted that shot with his first bowl, uh, but backed himself on the draw, as you rightly said, Brenton. It is his strength, is the, is the draw. But uh, then, of course, was left with little option and endeavoured to get the jack clearly into the ditch, but got the next other best option from there is to get the kill, and, and Mike Coonan got that. As we see, some cardigans coming out here at uh, Mount Monganui. Ben has just put on his Celtic personalised attire. And we saw that Jack. And I just wondered though, Brendan, I, I'm just surprised how that's gone because Mike Kern had scored on that last end. You know, I thought he said, well, let's try and shorten it up. Not, but he knows what he's doing. So here is now Chad Grant. And we have to be without their skip for a few bowls. The Mike Kernahan four is a nature break for Mike Kernahan. And this is Gary Lawson on his lonesome at the port end of Bowls Mount Manganui, the club here. Good opening bowl here from Sheldon Bagby Howdy. Just going to. Go past, but sits on the centre line, metre a, a bit over. So it's imperative here. Chad Grant endeavours to give his skip a good start on this. The replay now of the seventh end. After Mike Kernahan killed the head when he was four down. So you see this bulb of Chad Grant's. Just 
going to finish over their head. That'll be the shot for sure. A metre by. So, Sheldon Bagley Halley following this one. Gary Lawson says it's close. And it will be close. It's just alongside the jack. Seven six. Now well, it's the replayed seventh end. It's the second end we've replayed. Uh, no surprise with the tightness of this match. We may see a few more. So here now, Kelvin Scott trying to get to the show at the. Bagley Howdy Bowl, but it's narrow on the line. I'm going to slip away. So it's interesting. Lawson indicating to Caleb Hope. He wants him to persevere on that backhand. And he has playing up towards the port end here. Sheldon Bagley Howdy playing the forehand, and Caleb Hope now on the backhand side. This Somerset National Fours final. And sits alongside the jack. So Kelvin Scott endeavoured to get at least second shot for Mike Kernan. And this is the, I just sense though, Brennan, this is where the, the, the trouble is for Mike Kernan, is that they're just not getting that. Chad Grant and Kelvin Scott at this point in time. Well, they've been outplayed <laughs> by the, the Gore youngsters, and I don't think there's any doubt about that. Sheldon Bagri Howley and... Caleb Hope time and time again nice have got green, bowls around the head whereas Chad Grant and Kelvin Scott have been more inconsistent Well we go back to the four that, that even that, that, that Mike Kernan scored, it actually came about from a good, two good drives in fact from Lance Pascoe that created that, that opportunity but the, the, the front two of the Gary Lawson side had the shots before Lance Pascoe oh, drove, so the and they've done it the right again now that on the replay as well of this uh, this end. So Lance Pascoe now will have to make sure that he's otherwise it's just too hard for Mike Kernan to try and draw his way out of it. As we watch this bowl now, while Lance Pascoe's looks to have good right, weight okay, going yeah. past the jack, and it's it is going to it right? is it's going to go by. And it's three. Three to the Lawson combination. Yes, yeah, so I think that bowl just next to the two Chad Grant bowls, there's the other green bowls. That's a bowl of Caleb Hope, and that's the third shot. And then obviously the two bowls you can see just to the right and in front of the jack. A little count. It may cut the count. That's oh, that's of course a Jamie Hill bowl, isn't it? So that's a make it four. So saying to Lance Pascoe, you are just two metres over, hold your line. Yeah, as it goes past us, it looks a, certainly less weight than the first. This looks a better line from Lance Pascoe. This is now breaking in towards the head. Just got to get past the front and does and draws right alongside the jack. Well played, Lance Pascoe. And, you know, Mike Kernan said to him, you're a couple of metres straight away. See, here's Lawson wanting to attack straight away. Got bowls around the head. Saying to Jamie Hill, play up there with weight. You can nick that bowl off clean. And here is Jamie Hill going for the Pasco bowl. Misses it. Bit of foot, good footwork there by Gary Lawson. Flick the bowl up on his foot. Well, much needed bowl from Lance well, Pasco, wasn't it? Front end's getting well beaten. I might Kuna has four, but has number three come up with a number of big bowls, Lance Pascoe. He has. He's played some, you know, sort of going down here on the on the 16th. He did that, and now again here on this the seventh. He's done it again with a draw shot. And Mike Kuna, he'll be desperately trying to get another bowl on the head. It's on its way on the forehand. From the Dunedin player from Northeast Valley. Looking at this bowl. This looks a good bowl here from Kernahan as well. Just going to go by though if it sits. 
And that would help the cause. I see sitting along the side here a few moments ago. Dave Archer, his good friend from Tory. Of course, they won the pairs together a number of years back. David Archer and Mike Kernahan. So I'm sure Lawson walking back. He's certainly looking at that bowl of Lance Pascoe's. Certainly, I'm sure he'll play with that reaching weight up through the port. Oh, let's just turn the mat over. Last time we turned the mat over oh, the drive which came. quick. It's coming quick. I see that little extra grip, even though really the grip comes on his left foot, which is off the mat. <laughs> so... Goes by, goes through the port, was close, Sheldon Bagley Howley, hands on head. They get another opportunity, last time we saw it playing down the seam, didn't he? Yeah. He needed a second opportunity, capitalised. Gary Lawson's indicated now with having Jamie Hill play that his shot and the two sh and the shot to Gary Lawson. You played on Starweed, you either draw or drive. Th th those weighted shots are so difficult to play and yep. we've seen... And Kernahan trying to get right to the back, but it goes into the ditch. Nice and far away, just a turn or two too much. And Gary Lawson. Second time round. On the drive again. And goes through the yeah, same goes port. Goes through this, the gap. So, Mike Kernahan scoring again. And we're all tied up now, seven apiece after seven of the 18 ends it's a replayed seventh end of course and killed by Mike Kernahan Gary Lawson was in charge early on and then that end they were again in charge until Lance Pascoe played a great bowl with his second well it's coming from the back end of the Kernahan side at this point in time isn't it you know the rescue the rescues so to speak really not the building it's more the rescue and uh, they've done it well. You know, we saw Lance Pascoe then, and we saw the end before, of course. Mike Kernahan uh, killed the end when he was in big trouble for sure on the head. So the front now needs to uh, take a lap, and I'm sure they they know that only too well. Chad Grant now on his backhand, playing away from the port end here at uh, the Mount, at Club Mount Monganui, breaking down towards the head. Oh, no is the first bulb of Chad Grant and it's going to be about a metre low of the jack but certainly finishes on the centre line Sheldon Bagley Harley the lead for Gary Lawson will be on his backhand Lawson of course going for his 14th New Zealand title and I think this would be Kernahan's 8th I'd stand to be corrected on that because I haven't got the records here of the pairs and singles, but we may be able to look that up throughout the, the game, this match, to see. So here is now Chad Grant playing his second bowl. There's a better bowl here from the Kernahan lead. He's going to draw right down towards the jack. Just skip by. Good bolt on the head for the Kernahan side. Sheldon Bagley Harley now on his backhand. Of course, this production we're bringing to you on Sky Sport next. Ben and Tamara had two production people here. Do a wonderful job. Make sure that we can bring this first class production to you. I know the people inside the clubhouse are watching it. And we hope you people at home as well are watching this. Enjoying this Sky Sports Next coverage. Of the final of the men's fours at the Somerset National Championships. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks time. Of course as well we'll be bringing the North-South match from the Silver Stream Club in Wellington. And then the Intercentre played around the greens of Wellington. And we'll be bringing you that as well right throughout the weekend on Sky Sports next. So Kelvin Scott is drawn in behind the head. Definitely holding a couple here is the Kernan side. In fact, holding three. So here's Caleb Hope on his backhand. A tall 
21 year old from the Gore Club. Kernahan definitely holding a couple. Just question, how's that line looking? No, it's going to break now under that, the centre line. Yes, it is. So, and short. Just leaving it blocked up now. Just the draw left for the either side. And here we'll see now Kelvin Scott from Elmwood Park in Christchurch. Definitely holding two, three is the call from Alex Reid. We watch this bowl here of Kelvin Scott's break towards the head. Just got to get front past the front and it doesn't. So it's an indication from Alex Reid. Definitely a couple to the Mike Kernahan side. Caleb Hope now playing his second and last bowl on this, the eighth end. With the scores all locked up at seven apiece. A bit of bowl here as Caleb Hope is not going to get to the jack. Just runs by. Still a healthy contingent inside bowls at Mount Monganui. Watching the coverage. Shout out to all of you in there. I suppose maybe getting a bit chilly out here. More comfortable confines Certainly inside is. the club. I uh, hope you are enjoying the coverage wherever you may be. Indeed, watching it, we've enjoyed bringing you the Somerset National Fours. Myself, Brenton Vinisroy, alongside Kevin Hicklin, and Ben and Tamara, who do all the amazing work behind the scenes putting this all together. So we've just seen Lance Pascoe <coughs> draw up another counter. All of a sudden, it's the Kernahan side that's holding the number. And it's three is the call as you watch this bowl of Jamie Hills, how far is it going to come back? Needs to sit on the bowls. In fact, just going to go by. And in fact, rolls the ditch. A bit of a momentum shift here, isn't it? Obviously, some great work saving on the back end from both Pasco and Kernahan. Well, the good thing was Chet Grant and Kelvin Scott both drew shots early on in the head. Yeah, now it's starting to get a bit of help from the teammates. It becomes a bit of an easier game. It when just makes it so much different. And, and Gary Lawson just saying to Jamie Hill, come on, get up past these front bowls. Give yourself a chance to get to the county bowls. Just going to question how far is it going to go by. It's going go to go by last. again. Again into the ditch, I think. Yeah, it is. So two bowls off the surface from Jamie Hill. Obviously was worried about being short and getting caught am amongst all the short bowls. You can see on screen too much weight on those. And obviously the line wasn't so that they'd land on the shot bowls either. So... Kernahan now had the rare opportunity of holding a good head and to build on it. The work done by his front end players. Here's Kernahan on the backhand following this bolt. Breaking down towards the head now. How's the width? Going to get all the way past. Has to get past the front bowls. No, it's not. <coughs> But, of course, what it does do is it just makes that target for Gary Lawson that much harder to get around. He's got to get past those front bowls to draw to the jack. So here is Lawson, that Gary Lawson now, also holder of 13 New Zealand titles. And is it breaking down towards the head now? Has to get past this bowl of... The Kernah inside, and he's going to. Is he going to sit? Just goes by. Certainly had everything right about it, Brenton. Didn't it look as though he may have got a touch on the jack? He can only shake his head. Gary Lawson, so close, but yet so far where it's ended up. Still holding three, Kernah. Was that well judged by Gary Lawson on the draw to get around those front bowls? So Kernah now, the one, the one thing that Kernah won't want to do is to give Gary Lawson a shoulder to work off. So here's now Kernahan on the mat, playing his last bowl. And well, this is the eighth end with the scores all locked up. at seven all on the backhand. Here's Kernahan. 
Good indication from his teammate standing there to see whether it's going to get into the county area or not. They'll give their body language normally tells us. And yep. in fact they didn't move much. No, they didn't. <laughs> in fact. Us they weren't too happy with it. Uh, but what it has done, it's made it really, really difficult for Gary Lawson to get into the head. And it may see him have to change his hand or he might be looking to play with a lot of weight down onto the Sheldon Bagley Halley bowl. That's what because there's a lot of bowls in front. This is the purple and white multicoloured bowl, isn't which it? Which is the middle of there's a line of three bowls there. It's the middle bowl in there because to get to the draw now on that backhand side would certainly be a challenge. So we'll see what weight Gary Lawson elects to play. Well, we'll know if he turns over the mat. So what's the mat? Is he going to turn over the mat? No, he's not. So you think from that that it's just going to be a draw, but on the forehand side, you think. No, yeah. here's the drive. He's playing with that full weight to get to the Bagley Howley Bowl. That's what he was playing for to get some contact. They're going to run through, sit through, roll back. The head certainly all changed around with that. And it still looks like two, though, does it? From our monitor, it looks like two, and that's what Alex Reed is quickly indicating as well. So he did cut the count by one in the end, Gary Lawson. He wasn't far away from maybe pinching it away from Mike Kernahan. Mike Kernahan takes the lead, I believe, for the first time. 9-7 after eight of the 18 ends. Mike Kernahan leading Gary Lawson in the men's final here at the Somerset National Fours and bowls Mount Monganui. And, of course... It was 7-2. After five ends, it was the Lawson side who was leading by seven shots to two. So a great comeback from the Kernahan side. The, we play now the ninth, the halfway mark of this final of this men's fours. I believe it's four ends apiece as well. Just looking at your score sheet there, Kevin. Yes, it is. It's interesting, the women's final... Although it was won convincingly, so to speak, by Sandra Keith, the composite side Very of the start, well Wendy Green side actually outscored the Sandra Keith side by nine ends to eight in that women's final and uh, got defeated. So it was the it was the big numbers that got picked up. Jack Grant, good opening bowl here on the ninth end. Yeah, five and a four back-to-back -back ends in that women's final. So important. Sandra Keith getting the win over Wendy Green. So one national title has been handed out. And an hour and a half time or so, another will be handed out. Will it be Mike Kernahan? Bouncing back from that agonising defeat to Dean Alger 12 months ago at 9 Eye Bowling Club in the fours. Or will it be Gary Lawson? Celebrating his record setting 14th national title. Stick with us here on Sky Sport next. Chad Graham now yeah, just drawn two very, very good bowls <coughs> on that forehand side. And of course, they had struggled going up that way to the two metre mark. But Chad Grant, this particular end, has certainly gave Kernhan a good start. Good response here from Sheldon Bagley. How he just goes by. Certainly good attempt from the young Gore player, Calvin Scott now. He'll play his first on the ninth end. And he'll try and get another bowl close by for the Kernham combination. Of course, the good thing for Mike Kernham with the Chad Grant bowl, that shot, it's sitting right on the centre line. And this bowl of... Gilwin Scott is going to tick away, duck away under the centre line and be short. So again, we've seen Gary Lawson. He's persisting to make sure he gets Caleb Help Hope playing on that backhand side, going up towards the port end here at Mount Monganui. Gary Lawson looking at this, but looks to be just going to go past the jack was certainly a great effort there from Caleb Hope Brennan looked as though 
He was going to get a touch on the jack. Yeah, certainly looked on target, didn't it? Right from the time it left his hand, he thought it was going to be in the area. Gary Lawson was interested. But it finds a gap. It's really good to see Gary Lawson. I've said this a couple of times, or a number of times, taking these younger guys, Sheldon Bigley Howell and Caleb Hope, under his wing. Because it's certainly great mentoring for these younger players. Oh, they can learn so much, can't they? Oh, just, absolutely. Just, just playing with them. They, they don't have to you know, get actual one on one time with them or anything like that, but just playing with, them, with Gary Lawson, learning how one of the very best in the business does it. So here's now Caleb Hope on the back end, looking to get the shot bowls and the jack. Does. Gets both of the shot bowls out. So both of the bowls from Chad Grant disappear. So uh, that's twice now we've seen Caleb Hope successfully attack the head. And the other good thing is, when, you know, the young fellas all play together and, it's, and it's nothing better for them to play with, you know, one of the masters and learn not only so much the discipline about on the green, but just how they play the game and to, you know, have sit out at night, have a coffee and a bite to eat. And, nice and little slide through there from Lance Pascoe. Finds its way closer towards the jack after running into the, the short Kelvin Scott bowl. So holding two, Kernahan again. Jamie Hill trying to get to the jack and he has got the jack and I think that is going to, it's out. Kill. Another kill. And uh, now I'll try again. <laughs> Jamie Hill was trying to kill it. <laughs> no, he that's what not. he's done. And we will replay the ninth end. There is no chance that Ben and Tamara are going to get out of here early. No. No, there's not. They won't get... The, no. They won't get the, they won't get the 6 o'clock bus back to Tauranga. <laughs> yeah, dead right. If this is the third replayed end we have had. That's what you expect in a final, of course, of this magnitude. I think that time, uh, the first two times we've had replayed end, it was done with deliberate fashion that time I don't think that was the result Jamie Hill was going for no just having to run onto the jack and just followed it all the way out to the boundary line and uh, and disappeared so that replay now we've replayed the sixth seventh and eighth ends that we've uh, replayed but you, Ben if you have to wait till I'll give you my gold card Ben and that'll make sure you'll get a discount on the buses back to Tauranga for you <laughs> It's all weekend, isn't it? Gold card? It certainly is. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Winston. So, Chad Grant now, who has lifted his performance the last few ends. Here's Mike Kernahan. Watches this one, which is going to pull off about a metre and a bit short. And now that the Green will now be starting just to slow down fractionally as the sun and cloud the cloud cover and the sun moving away. And it will it'll just just slow up fractionally. As we see this bolt, my Bagley Harleys, and this is going to get an applause and Gary Lawson draws right alongside the jack. It's the target now for Chad Grant to draw to that bolt. Nice little recovery from Bagri Howley on this replayed end, of course, from the previous time around. The first time we played this ninth end, it was Chad Grant who had two in and around the head. And the second is good after being short with the, the first. Bagri Howley now. Need to try and replicate his first, or better it if possible. Playing. Forehand side, then come around the short Chad Grant bolt. Gary Lawson's interested, just finds a touch on the short Chad Grant bolt, so it doesn't, doesn't change the situation. Grant holding shot for Kernan's four. Now Kelvin Scott on the mat. This the culmination of the Somerset National Fours in the men's final. Earlier today it was Sandra Keith 
beating Wendy Green in the women's title decider. Gary Lawson barking out instructions to Caleb Hope. Young Southlander. He's impressed in his role as number two. Coming behind Sheldon Bagri Howley. In front of Jamie Hill. Mike Kernahan saying that. Stay with it. Same hand. Forehand side to Kelvin Scott. Number two for his quartet. It's just going to run by. One shot to the Kernan combination. Nine seven. Well, of course, the replay again of this nineteen. So that was me just cancelling dinner tonight at one of the leading restaurants in Tauranga because we're sitting here. So. Harbour side, lovely restaurant on the strand, but that's okay. Did you say if you gave them a shout out, then maybe not get charged the fee? Is that, <laughs> is that how this works? They got a shout out. <laughs> yeah, but just, you just gave them one. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't book for a bit later. <laughs> well, that, we'll just see how these things progress, <laughs> Brendan, all right? As we watch now, Jamie Hill. Going to play up to the shoulder, Begley Howley bowl. Play with reaching weight. 9 7, 9 7 to the Mike Kernahan. After eight ends. So it's interesting, Brendan, that just seen a bit of a change around now. Jamie Hill's actually been struggling the last what, few ends. And then the Kernan sides managed to get bowls on the head, and that means now Gary Lawson's having to pull those big bowls out. Because <clears throat> the front two, Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bigley Howley, overall have been pretty impressive. We see this bowl of Lance Pascoe's, which is going to go by and just sits him behind. So. Gary Lawson saying, come on, Jamie, make sure you're up, because his first bowl was short and narrow. And I'm sure Lawson would rather see the bowl go into the, into the ditch, but at least get a chance to get to the bowl. And he's going to just go past. He gets a touch on it. Well played by Jamie Hill. And, in fact, would have made two shots out of that. Just got a turn on the bowl and his own set there as well. Yeah, wonderfully played from one down to two up. Very well executed by Jamie Hill. And he just mentioned that he had been here. Yeah, Greek struggling, struggling a bit. Needed that one. And that certainly means that Gary Lawson will make his way to the mat. Uh, a bit more of a spring in his step. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see Kernahan, depending what his view is from the mat. But I'm sure he'll be, because I can see the Lance Pasco bowls in behind the head towards the deep end under the number two there. And sure enough, Kernan's playing with that weight to get to in between the port to get to the jack. And they knew straight away that was... They turned away on that. They knew that wasn't going to give Mike Kernan the result. You can see there on the camera where the two counting bowls are. What you can't quite see on the camera is where the bit on the your screen is the back bowls, which has two Lance Pasco bowls that are sitting right down towards the deep end of the rink and that's the shot that Mike Kernhunt will certainly endeavour to play with his next Lawson I'm 
sure it'll be happy if we could move the jack just around the corner and that would negate that shot for Mike Kernahan. And here is now Gary Lawson playing down to, holding two shots. And if he can touch the jacker, and it's going to go right under the head. So Mike Kernahan, he'll attack this with ditch running weight, try and get the jack to the ditch. On the mat is the Northeast Valley current blackjack playing this with more weight to get to the jack for sure he's watching this closely as Kernahan is it going to be get wide to again going, to going wide past and it will be so Gary Lawson still a bold of play trying to work out how do I make this more than two currently the Sheldon Bagri Howley bowl to the right of the jack and Jamie Hill bolt the left of jack uh, the two shots Chad Grant is the owner of the whitey green bowl just above that which is the third that's interesting see Mike Kernan walked up right to the other end and having a chat there with Lance Pascoe and Kelvin Scott so here is that Gary Lawson bolt. Is it going to come back far enough to count? And see it breaking in towards the head. Is it going to get all the way in? It's going to go by. Would it count? Don't think so. No, see what? Just the two. So we're all tied up. Nine apiece. Halfway through this men's fours final. After nine of the 18 ends, we have three replayed ends. And amongst that, we were all square now, Kevin Hicklin. Well, every end at the moment has got to be played twice, doesn't it, to get a result? Because that's certainly what we've been seeing. But all locked up, nine all, after nine ends at the halfway mark in this final of the Somerset National Men's Fours at Mount Monganui, which will draw to a close this, the Nationals calendar for the year. And we're certainly treated this afternoon to two of the best skips going around. Of course, part of our blackjack side and it's interesting we have seen now this is interesting much shorter end this has really been shortened up this one of right in front of us here in the commentary position and very very short end in well, fact had a mostly quite regular diet of full length or three-quarter length ends haven't we this is not wouldn't be that far beyond the, the minimum so, Sheldon Baggy Harley, very good opening bowl from the young Gore lead just in behind the jack on that backhand side. That's two wet. Chad Grant will go to as well on the backhand. Just this change of length looks to be on a good line as it goes past us here in the commentary position down towards the jack. Is it going to get all the way to the jack? For applause from Mike Kernahan. So, it's saying to Sheldon Bagley, Howley, we've got the shots. Change your hand. No sense in touching the bowl. Only needs a touch and a make shot of it. So, Sheldon Bagley, Harley now. A very good opening bowl on this. The 10th end. Asking it to work hard and it's going to finish jack level virtually. Two good bowls really from the Gorp lead. Jack Grant now on the backhand. And no doubt invaluable experience for Sheldon Bagri Howley as the lead. Every time he plays a two, he jogs down the other end, stands alongside Gary Lawson. And here's how he calls the next two through. Caleb Hope and Jamie Hill. So, well played there by Chad Grant. Gary Lawson indicating that they are now one down from Chad Grant. Ran into the deliberately trying to get to the bowl, but did that. So, here now is 
Kind of hope Gary Lawson looking at this now as it breaks towards the head. Is it going to get a touch on the jack? No, it doesn't. Mike Kernan just saying to Kelvin Scott, just draw down here. On the backhand is Kelvin Scott. Goes past us here. Just question. Is it going to come back all the way? No, it doesn't. Mike Kernan quite happy, though, with where it went to and behind the head. So here is now Caleb Hope. How's the weight on this one? Just going to pull up under the head, about a metre and a half short. Here now is Kelvin Scott <coughs> trying to get, just get under where he to draw to the county bowls. Doesn't get all the way. Is he going to get far enough? Uh, not sure. I don't think so. Alex Reid indicating it's still one to the Mike Coonahan side. Jamie Hill trying to get to the jack and got a touch on the jack as well. Unfortunately, all I think he's done is moved it towards uh, the bowl of Chad Grant, perhaps. Or it's close between that bowl. It is a touch it. The Chad Grant bowl and the Sheldon Bagri Howley bowl. And Alex Reed, our first time lollipop man, our marker. Never done it before. No, he's, no. he's, he's saying, Where do I stand? He's, so he's decided to stand off the rink to stay way out, out of the action. So, Lance Pascoe now, he also gets a touch on the jack, moves it slightly behind the head. That'll certainly be the shot itself when it is. <coughs> it's great to see the current players as well doing the marking and helping out. Yeah. Kirsten Edwards earlier in the, in the women's final. Defending champion on the women's fours. The Here's Hill on comes. the drive. The big drive goes past, goes wide. The big driver is Jamie Hill. Uh, had some power behind it, that's for sure. It's like he sort of awakes from his slumber. He's <laughs> such a quiet certainly is. guy. And just so s silky smooth with his draw. And then you're almost surprised every time he drops because yeah, it's, we, it's so violent compared to everything uh, else. It's a good bowl from Pascoe here. Sits on what was his shot bowl. Draws applause from his teammates. And that's two. I'm sure we're going to see attack here from the Lawson. And Gary Lawson, I'm sure he'll be attacking this. It's a at shorter end. Come down. It's reasonable, pretty quick weight. And he is. He's on the horn, just trying to look at the jack. Gets the jack clean. And another one killed. He's just working out whether they pick them all up or whether they're going to bring them up and. and Gary Law said, let's, let's bring them back. We'll bring them back again. Yeah, because he doesn't have to carry them. Gets all, <laughs> gets all his teammates in opposition to carry the bowls back. I think he actually might have said, oh, I'll help carry them back if you want. But so. another replayed end. It's the fourth replayed end. I've already forced Kevin Hicklin to cancel his dinner reservations. How many others? Night plans will be affected by this match. I hope you are enjoying our coverage wherever you may be. Obviously, you can watch it on YouTube, on Sky Sport Next. So you can take it to the restaurant if you want to. <laughs> Why not? Could, yeah, well, they're certainly these players. And again, we've seen that short played in. And there's no skips. Lance Pascoe's down here questioning the length of this one. And 
And now you're going to see the umpire. I think we are. So, Kelvin Scott, I'd call the... He's the grandfather of this. He knows what's... He's been around a long time. He'll know whether it's up or not. And I think Kelvin Scott said, I'm happy with it. Yeah. No need to bring the measure out. <laughs> We've stalled enough of this game. Yeah, we have. We've had enough of these sort of... <laughs> so, again, playing right down in front of us. On the backhand, it's Sheldon Begley Harley. And another good opening bowl by the. And Jamie Hill clapped then, so that's. Most you're going to get out of him. Uh, and he's obviously down there at the moment because we've got both of the skips, both the skips on a bathroom both break. Both on leave. <laughs> on leave. So, maybe they've gone to change their dinner plans as they well. They must, yeah, they may well have, may well have. <laughs> so, it's Bigley Howley. He's had another good opening bowl. And another good bowl here from Seldon Bigley Howley as Gary Lawson makes his way back, draws a toucher, gets applause from Gary Lawson, Jed Grant, Mike Kernan making his way back as well down towards us here in the commentary position. Two good bowls from the lead has kind of pull up short. Gary Lawson's return and about to re enter the frame is Mike Kernan as well. Two skips are back. Okay, gotta keep the fluids up. Yeah, involved in a real marathon match here. Sure is he. Actually have played near thirteen ends, but we're actually playing the tenth. Replay tenth. Multiple replays. We got through the first what? I think five ends. Yeah, unscathed. <laughs> so here and now the replay started. Go and Scott. Play down. Definitely I'd say three down. Kelvin Scott reaching up to the counting bowls. Oh, Sheldon Bagley Harley, and how far is it coming back? Breaking all the way now. This is a great attempt here by, I'm going to, in fact, a toucher. And still one to the Dawson combination after a very, very good bowl there from Kelvin Scott. Caleb Hope will look to reply. So playing on the backhand side. Just trying to sit on that bowl. In fact, it slides through the gap just on that right-hand side of the screen, just to the right of the Bagri Howley bowl. So saying now to Kelvin Scott, just never to repeat your first bowl and sit on the shot bowl. Yeah, it wasn't far away with his first. A slight adjustment needed. The weight was good. This is going to fall under the line. But I'd say it's still a clear view. It will be a clear view still down to the bowl for Lance Pascoe. You see now Jamie Hill. Oh, a much wider line. So, Mike Kernan just saying to Lance Pascoe, just draw down there on that backhand. Just needed to watch the previous line from Kelvin Scott with his first bowl. Can he replicate that? It's the wide bowl of Sheldon Bagri Howley. Just didn't get the line right. So, Gary Lewison, not that concerned really if. Jamie Hill was to move the jack. That wouldn't be, he'd be quite happy with that, but it's going to, and he is, in fact, turned over the Scott Bolt and may well have made two of it. Yeah, certainly about to be indicated by Alex Reid. Uh, oh, Wally Pot Man, it is indeed two. 
So Lance Pesco playing with weight to reach right to the jack. Is it breaking down towards the jack now to the shot pole? Just all but got a touch on it. A good effort. In fact, it's cut. We count back to the one, just the one now. It's a pretty good draw, bowls, isn't it? Really, and that selection of four will be there or thereabouts. Well, it's certainly not easy at you know, the shorter ends because of the speed of the green. It's fingertip control. So Gary Lawson playing for his 14th New Zealand title as we come to the latter stages of the 10th end on his forehand is Gary Lawson looks like it's going to stay on that wide side and it will Mike Kernan making his way back to the mat Decent crowds still in attendance, although some I think made their way back to the, the club rooms for a bit of shelter from the wind. Seagull's back. Oh, he's just keeping on watching brief though, this time the Seagull. Not actually on the rink. I think he's staying a few rinks away. But he may be interested in returning to rink number two. Well, he's making his way across here to see Mike Kernan and his mate. So Mike Kernan trying to get down to that bowl. What is the shot bowl? Uh, Again, just stay on that wide side, just fractionally. A lot of people have gone over tea in Tauranga, Mount Mong. Well, Mount Monga News especially, because a lot of us senior citizens live in this area, so it's tea, is it 5.15? I think boomers is the Boomers, is that's the, the term. Seagull does want to see Mike Kernan again. I think you're not too far wrong. He's just off screen. Oh, no, he's been disturbed. All he wanted to do was see Mike again. Uncle Mike. Seagull's departed. I was chased away by Gary Lawson Shadow, or what? There'll be no family reunion. Gary Lawson on the mat. He's got the line right this time. Marks on the wide side again. So it's not going to change the situation. He does have the two bat bowls though, does Gary Lawson now. It's two orange bowls. Burnt orange. I'm pretty safe to say we're going to be completing this 10th end. It won't be replayed again. So on the wide side, Mike Kernan turned his back straight away on that bowl. He so knew. one to Gary Lawson. He reclaims the lead. 10-9 now after 10 of the 18 ends in this final event of the Somerset National Fours, the men's final. Already handed out one trophy today, that being the women's fours trophy in the 70th year. And Sandra Keith completing her personal set of national titles, winning her first Fours title along with Claire Hendra, who won her maiden national title, and another national title for Selena Smith and Taylor Bruce. Sandra Keith beating Wendy Green in the women's final, which we brought you earlier today. And Sheldon, uh, Sheldon Bagri Howley has gone short again, but maybe this time is it too short? Or just okay? I don't think there's much concern from Mike Kernahan's force. So they may allow this, but another very short end. It must be not too far away from the bare minimum. Yeah, it's all been agreed to by the uh, two skips, and it certainly is shorter, playing up towards the Port of Tauranga end. As we play this, the 11th end, with Gary Lawson leading Mike Kernahan. Ten shots to nine. Another good opening bowl from Sheldon Baggy Harley, the lead for... Gary Lawson with Caleb Hope, Jamie Hill and Gary Lawson, the skip going for his 14th New Zealand title up against the combination of Chad Grant, Kelvin Scott, Lance Pascoe and Mike Kernahan and of course both of these skips 
part of the very important part of the New Zealand blackjack side. So you watch this bowl of Chad Grants is going to get all the way to the jack. Just didn't need it one way. One more roll would have been right on top of it. So Sheldon Bagley Harley now. Certainly, a move to these shorter ends has got pretty consistent in his draw. Gary Lawson seems to like this bowl of Sheldon Bagley Howley's just endeavouring to get past, and it does well played by the the lead. Well, seems very comfortable with these shorter ends. That's Bagley Howley. And Chad Grant going to pull up short. Real tight encounter this, as we expected to see. Although we did see Gary Lawson jump out to a 7-2 lead. And Mike Kernahan with a 4 or 1 and a 2. Clawed his way back to, in fact, get to the front. So, Caleb Hope persevering on that backhand. Mike Kernahan saying to Kelvin Scott, endeavour to beat the back bowl because that'll give second shot and could drift in underneath four shot. So here's the Kelvin Scott bowl playing this very short end up toward the port end here. And Tauranga just going to go by, take March fingertip. Weight control on this quick green. Gary Lawson looking closely at this bowl of Bagley Alpha Caleb Hope, but it was on the short side. Kernan saying to Kelvin Scott on that forehead side, can reach up to the bowl. It's the one, as you'll see. Here's the lollipop man, Alex Reed. Here's the lollipop on screen. Was this a bit of line? To Gary Lawson. No, just again, just going to hang out slightly on that wider side. And I'm sure Gary Lawson would won't mind here if Jamie Hill goes to the back of the head where there's that nest of three. Well, they'll be trying to draw another counter. He won't mind if. Goes back fraction leap. Here's now Jamie Hill. This is going to alter things. No, just. This will be two for sure now. Yeah, change of hand now is the call from Mike Kernahan. So here is Lance Pascoe on his backhand. Trying to get down to Jamie Hill bowl going to the jack. This goes by. Was always on the quick side though. So here's now Jamie Hill. Gary Lawson likes this bowl. As it breaks down, just going to go by, and he won't mind that at all. Lance Pascoe just got to correct his weight by only about a metre. It's on a good line to the jack. It was the Pascoe bolt. As you watch this one breaking down towards the jack as well. It's going to go by outside the jack line. Just get Alex to check. I'm sure it's two. To the Gary Lawson side. And Lawson will, I imagine, persevere. And just the one is the call from Alex. With the lollipops. And this bowl of Gary Lawson, this is on a good line. This bowl is going to sit on the... It does, sits neatly on what is the shot bowl. 
certainly make it two now. And yet, the lollipops indicated by Alex Reed telling us just that. Low five for Caleb Hope to skip Lawson. So, Kernan. We'll see in a moment what weight he's going to play on that backhand. Trying to either sit on the Gary Lawson shot bolt or touch on the jack and he's going for the bowls or the jack as Kernahan gets the jack clean and it's not killed I don't think or is it killed? Is it oh no. Let's have a look. I thought it had stayed in. From my own angle it looks like it stayed in. Put a mat on it. I'll put a mat on it. We might be replaying this one again as well, Brendan. They reckon it's out. Oh. Well, it turn, but umpire, Gary, umpire. Here comes the umpire now to have a look at it. It's really close. So what was happening there is Caleb Hope put the, the mat right next to it to give Mike Kernahan the line. He put himself on the outer boundary of the rink to see whether it was in from his end. It looks like he thought it was in. It's very close. So again, the umpire makes certain. From our angle, and looking there on the monitor to me, Brenton, it, it does look to be in. No, I think the laser's indicated it's in. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I think that we saw the, the margin indicated. A very small amount. Gary Lawson, I don't think, was convinced it was in. No, he wasn't, actually. <laughs> he took a big little look at the umpire. I was like, really? You sure? Yeah. The umpire said the laser's pretty accurate you would think on that line so yeah, Gary Lawson wanted replay number five yeah well there's plenty of room to draw the shot here for Lawson as well there's the Lance Pasco bowl but Kernahan is holding a couple and this is of course the last Lawson bowl two down two to Mike yeah, Kernahan Lawson just suggested maybe three but no there's two that's what Alex Reid indicated earlier So, Gary Lawson, as we come to the end of the 11th end on his backhand, <coughs> leading by 10 to 9, down on the head. The important thing here for Gary Lawson, of course, so is to make sure that his bowl comes back alive. That's the key thing, doesn't hang outside. Uh, it was gone too far, or you go too far under the line, and that'll be good enough for... Just need it to hold up. Shot. If it stays up, it will stay up, I think. Will it? Will it? No. Just. And he's so very unhappy with that. Gary Lawson kicks his towel in disgust. Not once, but twice. Uh, that was what? A quarter of a roll? Certainly was. And Too much? Just. Smallest of margins in this game. As we said, the jack in by the smallest of margins. That bowl rolling out by the smallest of margins. As we said, Brenton, the important thing was for Gary Lawson, because it's very hard sometimes, and Jack's right towards the ditch. He wanted to make sure he came alive. Now, I'm just wondering here whether Mike Kernan and Co are looking at a bowl in amongst that nest. If they've got two, is there a bowl that they want to try and get out of the head? I would have thought Mike Kernan would be happy to get another one to get Mike. three you just draw to get oh, a third that. wouldn't you and that's what Mike Kernan is doing there he is on the mat is Mike Kernan now on that backhand knowing he doesn't actually have to draw the shot as long as he comes alive past those front bowls he'll have a count up and that's exactly what he has done yeah, wonderfully played so one two Nice and handy, and I believe there's a third. He's looking to make sure that three confirmed now. So, Kernahan takes the lead back now after 11 of the 12 ends. Mike Kernahan leading Gary Lawson 12 to 10 in this men's fours final here at Bowls Mount Monganui. The final match.
of these Somerset National Fours. <coughs> well, of course, Gary Rawson was under the impression as well that the jack was out. He didn't think, even when the laser from the umpire came on, he was still convinced that the bowl was out. And as I said, the important thing for Lawson was that he came alive and with his bowl. And well, that, that, that's the thing here, obviously very cruel it did go into the ditch absolutely it but was he didn't need to be that close no he did not he just you know the second shot we could have been within four meters of yeah. of of the jack he'd be disappointed and he certainly i think showed that's that. why the frustration because yeah. he, he knows that he didn't have to push it to the limit and he did push it to the limit and of course results in three shots as it turns out now for mike kernahan you can understand with the competitiveness of it and he wanted to go and grab the shot and himself. the jack was delivered by Chad Grant but it was went into the ditch so it's replayed, relayed by the Lawson combination and we're back to those shorter ends as we've now completed 11 of the 18 ends and it's clear that Mike Kernan wants to play the longer ends isn't he? And Gary Lawson wants to play the shorter ends Clash of Styles so we see this first bolt of Chad Grant's. It's a pretty handy opener. Going to be lower the jack. A half a metre. Sheldon Bagley Harley, though, will come down on his backhand where he's been very consistent on this length. Just question that weight as it gets towards the head now. Going to draw right in my good opening bowl from Sheldon Bagley. How he drew right in behind the jack. Chad Grant trying to improve by a metre with his second bowl on this, the 12th end. And just goes by. So here now is Sheldon Bagley Howley holding the shot. Gary Lawson now trailing Mike Kernan by 12 to 10 after 11 of the 18 ends in this final of the Somerset National Fours here at Bowls at Mount Monganui. Another good bowl from Sheldon Bagley Howley. Very good opening bowls. It's two shots as indicated very quickly by Alex Reed. Impressed with how Alex Reed has performed in his debut with the Lollipops? Done very well, actually. Done very well. You can see standing erect. <laughs> Look at that. Standing like a statue raised high are the two lolly red Lollipops. And there's, look, he's still standing there holding them up. Well done, well, Alex. Is he frozen now? <laughs> he might be. Because he, he, he's very very statuesque. It's very statuesque. Can someone check? He hasn't moved at all. Oh, oh, there we go. No, it just moved. So here now is kind of hope. Going to sit on the bowl. Does it just go by? Oh, might see a change in the lollipops. No, still two is the call from. So here now is Kelvin Scott. Trying to get down to those Sheldon Bagley Harley Bowls. This is a good attempt here from the number two from Mike Kernahan and just fell out. And my Still enough for the shot though. It is the one to Mike Kernahan leading 12 10. So Caleb Hope now will try and get down on that backhand, sit on that bowl. We'll get a touch on the jack. If it had fallen in the Calvin Scott bowl, it would have been a touch up. But fell out. Still Here's the weight. Shot. No, it's not going to get there. That bowl of Caleb Hopes. So Mike Kernan saying that in fact they are one down. It is the one now indicated by Alex to the. Oh, interesting. Yeah, certainly Alex Reed first time around. Thought it was good enough for the shot. Certainly looks more in line with the jack in the Bagley Howley bowl. 
judging by our picture. Well, that's made it certain if there was any doubt about who held shot. It's now certainly nestled alongside Pagri Howley Bowlers to the right there. So Jamie Hill hit his back, Mike's nephew. He's pretty keen to get involved. Seagull so just wandering onto the screen. Just wants a bit of family time. So, saying to Jamie Hill, if you can turn the bowl out through the head, you can make three or four of it, but it looks to be on the wide side, and it is. So, saying to Lance Pesco, is Mike Kernan, get on to us, get on the front of us, and turn the, the bowl into the head. So here is now Lance Pesco. I see his partner Mandy Boyd's taken up a position over on the far side of the rig sitting there all on her own watching this very very tight encounter in this Kernahan Lawson final everything that we expected Brenda wasn't it well we knew it was going to be tight didn't we between these two multiple national champions of course Lawson the record holder with 13 Kernahan so, with more than 5 what Gary Lawson now is looking at I think you can still make three of this to get to the bowl. And behind the head, Kelvin Scott bowl. Sheldon Bagley Howley down there examining it as well. Always looking for shots. There's Gary Lawson when he can gate slightly ajar. You'll see yeah, he Lawson. See, he certainly sees things that some others don't. Never content with just the one. Here is Jamie Hill playing with weight to get down to where he wanted to get to the shot bowl. Ran into the what was the bowl of Lance Pascoe's. And more than likely, now it was still holding the shot, but more than likely negates that shot, which may well have been there because there's now two bowls of Mike Kernahan's on the head. As oh. that seagull, it's amazing, just keeps coming back every time it goes again. We'll come back to see. Well, every time Mike Kernahan turns his back, he goes, All right, I'm off. So we can't quite see the head at present, but it's right out in front of me here. And I'll keep. Formed as Kernahan now playing with weight to try and get down with reaching weight to get down to what is the shot bowl. But this is going to pull up short. Well, Kernahan may have played that with a wee bit more weight. Gary Lawson still looking to try and. Well, there's two bowls in there Kelvin Scott bowl and a. Lance Pesco bowl. Mike Kernahan kicks the bowl back for twelve ten. Mike Kernahan leading. Gary Lawson holding the shot as we come to the end of the twelfth end. And he's certainly looking for that shot that we spoke about. Brendan trying to get and turns them over executed <laughs> well I think he's grabbed the second shot three maybe down. even three yeah with that there's that bowl there from Jamie Hill as well a black bowl which is probably the third so that's what indicated anyway by Calvin Scott Mike Kernan on the charge trying to get to that shot bowl and here we and go get a kill. <laughs> here we go again kill number five and we will replay the 12th end. Has Alex counted how many kills has been as well? Does he do that? Oh, I'd hope so. I'm pretty, I've counted it five. Is it, yeah, it is would it, be it about. Yeah, it would be around that. Pretty, pretty sure it's the fifth killed end. Seat. Uh, replay of this. So Alex is quite happy because they're actually going to play 
goes. Down this way again, you see the kill from Mike Kernahan. T t at least the call was from Kelvin Scott that they were in fact three down. He's going to get tired, Alex Reid. Yeah, he's a lot of time he, standing up. Oh, he's having a sit, he's having a little sort of. We're approaching two and a half hours of this match. He was late to start. Though, he was. He, he missed an end. He, 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 he missed the start time. And then he asked, it asks us what to do." <laughs> but saying that, he's been pretty professional. Very good. And Might have to debut. A lollipop man, maybe a career in lollipop business. So, he now. The length straight away has been on the replay. We're seeing Chad Grant on the backhand as we play the replay again of N12. And a pretty good opening bowl here from Chad Grant. How far is it going to go by? Goes by by a good couple of metre and a half. Yeah, so, by my calculation, we should be playing N17 now. Yeah, that would be, yes, yes. But we're a long way away from in 17. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course, no time limit, I must remind you, in post-section play. There was a time limit in section play, three hours for a match, which we would be, you know, still some half an hour away from. But we certainly wouldn't be finishing. No, we would not. But we will be finishing here. And who knows? It's so, so tight. We might be going to an extra end as well to decide this match. Well, dare I say it. Here comes Chad Grant. Just needs to get some draw on the bowl now. Yeah, to the centre line. And he will do, but still be Sheldon Bagley Howley holding shot. Played very well, Sheldon Bagley Howley. Actually, he's been very impressive off the front. And here's the other difference with this, Brendan. Sheldon Biggie Howley has spent most of his time skipping and playing at the back end of the team. If we talk about where the opportunities lie right now within the New Zealand framework, it's players off the front. You know, we've got the Ali Forsyth, we've got Gary Lawson, we've got Shannon McElroy. And so the back end's pretty well covered. It's, it's, it's players at the front that we really sort of... That's where they have to start off from... You know, we saw, for example, Chris the Leaf in the Māori Nations and that Trans-Tasman, you know, a committed lead and acquitted himself very, very well in, the, in, in those international events. So it's good for these guys to move out of the back-end positions of skipping and playing three in Caleb Hope and Sheldon bagley Harley and moving to the front of the side. That's where the best opportunities are going to be. Yeah, Sheldon Bagley Howley is not going to get picked to play skip for New Zealand any time anytime soon. So their best opportunities are playing with the leading players and and playing at the front end of the forward side. Of course, we saw Seamus Curtin as well, who did play three for Shannon McElroy, defeated, of course, by Mike Kernahan in that semi-final earlier on. And of course, he'll return to Australia where he's playing for the Gorilla Gorillas, as they're known, in the New South Wales Premier League. It's got underway, in fact, yesterday. So they're really struggling, really, here with their weight because we've had a change of. We're in that in between length. It's not the two metre mark, or it's not really short, which we've been playing a number of ends recently. It's sort of three quarters. Say so. Here now's Lance Pasco definitely down on the head on his backhand. Mike Kernahan standing, standing there very statue like. And yeah, Gary Lawson there just, just trying to get into the game, I think. He's get, just get Jamie Hill up. So that's two shots to the Kernahan combination as the call from Alex Reid and as Brenton rightly said encouraging Jamie Hill to get up you know to G him up so you heard the call there from Mike Kernan just get inside 
the Kelvin Scott Bowl, which you can't quite see at present. It's out to the right-hand side of Mike Kernahan. There you'll see it there, the Kelvin Scott Bowl. And breaks down the woods the head now. And just went by, didn't get a touch on the jack. Very close though, very unfortunate there, great effort from Lance Pascoe. One to the Lawson combination. And he's saying that you can make three of this, Jamie. Looks to be on the narrow side though, Brendan. Needs some, needs to get a, some luck and doesn't. That's uh, indicating Alex Reed that Gary Lawson holding one. The skips now change over. Gary Lawson might just stay and inspect the head, wait for Mike Kernahan to play the first of this replay 12th end. Still a good crowd sitting around here at the enjoying yeah, some cold refreshments. Well, others warm up with some warmer refreshments. This, yes, I see that. Here's Mike Kernahan now trying to get down to where the shop bolt is. They like this bowl as it breaks in towards the jack now. Does the Mike Kenham bowl? Draws right in behind the jack. That'll be the shot from Mike Kenahan. Well yeah. played. Just drew under, neatly under that front bowl. That's why Gary Lawson stayed there to inspect the hit because he knew, <laughs> he knows what Mike Kenahan's going for. He knew that he was most likely going to draw the shot. So he'd have to wait and see what the head looked like. Slowly making his way back to the mat. Well, he'll certainly be playing to reach the bowl. And you can see there on your monitor, I think he's virtually forced to play it on the backhand. I don't think there's enough line underneath to, on the forehand, to get down to the Mike Kernan bowl. And he is going to the forehand have to play it quick with weight and he is playing it with plenty of weight to endeavour to get underneath but of course going to get that line right and let's hang on that wider side very tight line on that forehand side Mike Kernhan will feel quite confident now drawing again down on that backhand because I'm sure for Gary Lawson to get the result and to tighten that line up. Mike Kernahan leading 12 10, 12 10 after 11 of 18 ends. If you look on the, t the screen there, the patching on the green, that's you can see the starweed, it's certainly very prominent. Here is now Kernahan on his backhand after drawing a very, very good shot with his first. And Lance Pascoe uh, under yeah, the head. It's not going to count. So it's just one at the moment. Lawson still has a second to play, though. Well, it depends what his <coughs> line looks from like in the mat. That's the big thing. And you would think if he's going to play the forehand with weight, he's got to play with a lot of weight to get under it to the bowl, well, he's saying Sheldon Bagley Howley indicating to get down on that forehand side to turn his bowl in. Well, on that basis, it would be, you would think, of equal opportunity for Lawson to actually drive on the other hand to get to directly to the shot bowl. And the kill again? No, because he's playing on the forehand, so that's makes it less likely of that and it's on its way so it's not going to be killed it's going to have to come back from there it's coming back now it's going to come back far enough no it's not so no, it's, it's going not. to be the one to Mike Kernahan so three shot advantage and we have 
finally got through the second segment of this men's fours final. Mike Kernahan now leading 13-10 over Gary Lawson after 12 of the 18 ends. And because we've had multiple replays, Kevin Hicklin, it feels like an age since after six ends it was 7-6. 7-6 right? to Gary, Gary Lawson. And then now after 12. So 7-3 oh, so on the second six to Mike Kernahan. Now the pigs, of course, we you got to remember in that first six ends, we, we saw Mike Kernan pick up that four as well because like he was 7-2 behind and picked that mm. four up. So, But uh, that was a long time ago. Jack's been delivered as we play in 13. Yeah, and this is People the sitting out here, they're enjoying themselves. They've got some Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay and oh, other. Some alongside us have got hot coffee. This is all the this is all the stuff you could have had at your restaurant booking if you hadn't cancelled it, Kevin. Well, yeah, certainly <laughs> wouldn't want to miss this encounter. That's for sure. And you and I, Brent, have been had the opportunity and pleasure of watching these guys play many internationals over the, the last two years, and they certainly, along with Shannon McElroy and Ali Forsyth, and of course Andrew Kelly. I think a very, very strong New Zealand men's side as we go to forward to the World Champs. And we've we have enjoyed watching them to date, and I'm sure we'll enjoy them as much when we get to the World Championships come May, along with our women's side on the Gold Coast. And, of course, we'll have Ben and Tamara there as well as they... Looking after the orchestra. Yeah, and plenty more events to come before then as well. North, south, followed quickly by the National Winter Centre and down in Wellington. We've got the New Zealand Secondary Schools. We've got the Interclub Sevens and then the Bowl 3 5 National Winter Club as well. So, a number of events to come before we even get to the Correct. World Bowls Championships. And we'll be bringing those all to you on Sky Sport next. So there's your home of bowls. And, yeah, a big thank you to Sky for their support. Uh, certainly got in behind bowls with, of course, the bowls 3-5. And now with Sky Sport next, it's great to have their support and their continued support. And that's appreciated by us all. And you, the viewers at home, as well, where you've got the opportunity to watch this live action on a very regular basis throughout the summer of bowls. 13-10, Mike Kernahan now leading to Gary Lawson as we play the 13th end. As we watch the bowl of Caleb Hope break towards the head. That's three shots to the Lawson combination. At this point, those are the short bowls there. So saying to Kelvin Scott, try and draw around. Paint on that backhand side, trying to get up, has to get through this port if he gets through the port he'll get to the jack or near to the jack and he does well played by Kelvin Scott certainly threaded in between two bowls on the backhand and drew the shot well played Mike Kernan shakes his hand very impressed with that one you won't, you won't get the, the high fives from, from Mike Kernan just a simple shake of the hand that, very, that means a lot does See now this bolt, Kate of Hope's going to fall short. Of course, just Mike Kernhan and Gary Lawson will be well aware of this. That shadow is starting to come out there now. Sun getting lower. Start to just slow down by a metre or so. That's what happens. So here now is Lance Pascoe with shot being held by the Lawson by the Kernan combination 
Lance Pasco now trying to get in and around these bowls. Has he got the weight to get all the way through the port? No, he hasn't. Gary Lawson saying to Jamie Hill, come on, draw up through our bowls with weight. Play that metre to get a move. One of those bowls, of course, what he's looking for as well. He doesn't get the shot to open things up a bit. Here is now the Jamie Hill bowl. Turns this shell of Bagley Hole. How they bump. Waiting onto the jack. And that'll make one of it. Well played by Jamie Hill. it earlier today when the sun was coming from the absolute uh, direction coming from the east in the morning it was in the players eyes and now women's fours semi-final now in this men's fours final sun coming from the west very much in the players eyes as they look to play towards the port end I think we're seeing the indication from Mike Kernahan to play with, I think, weight through on the forehand side to that shot bowl. We'll see in a moment. Here's Lance Pasco on the mat. Trying to play through to that shot bowl. That's certainly what he's doing, as we indicated he may well do. And now, yeah, it could be worse, in fact, because I can just see the two. It is two to the Gary Lawson side. And the Bagri Howley Bowls remained the, around the area. Wasn't far off, though, was Lance Pasco. It was a pretty good attempt. As we see that Jamie Hill Bowl just breaking in underneath the head. And well, more than likely that would make three, three. of them. Yeah, that's it is. Alex Reed is quick to indicate with the lily pops. So Lawson now holding three. As the skips now make their way to the mat. Kernahan will be first to play. He'll be on the draw. Or Mike Kernahan. Lance Pascoe just moving aside. Now you have to move. Away from the front of the camera. So we'll see now Mike Kernahan. Did we to draw the shot? Three down on his forehand is Mike Kernahan. Looking at this. Chasing this ball. Got to get past. Won't. Hasn't got the weight to get all the way past. Just needed a fraction more. Very close. And then one more roll. It looks like it's just the one now. It yeah, is. It has cut it to one, but it's very close to grabbing the shot. Seldon Beckley Howley taking over the spot of th number three now, giving the instructions to Jamie Hilly. Just rug his shoulders and say, Away you go, lad. So here is Wilson now on the back end, holding the one, as the indication was from now mark him, and also from Sheldon Bagley, how is going to come back far enough? No, it's not. Mike Kernahan now will just try and beat his own bowl on that forehand. Drew second shot, was three down. Leading 13-10 as we come to the end of the 13th end. Of 18. Three little... The children on the far side, the three little girls sitting over there very quietly watching this as Kernahan now. It's on its way. Looks to have more weight as this bowl of Mike Kernahan as it goes past us, trying to get down to his own bowl. Drawing pass to get to the shot. Will it get around for shot? It's a great effort by... Mike Kernahan and Brooks. Is that the shot? Still one is the indication from Alex Reed. That's Not quite great effort. Yeah, all ages watching the National Men's Force final. Which is great to see. 
Hearts sitting there very quietly and obediently enjoying the sunshine. And I've had enough. Fame got to them. <laughs> yeah. One solitary one. Three became one very quickly. There's Gary Lawson now. Holding one as was indicated by now Marker. And that's what it will remain as one. It's 13-11 now. 13-11 as we go into the 14th end. We start to climb down the board. Not sure. Yeah, in starting to run out now, of course. 13-11, Kernahan over Lawson. Five ends remaining in this contest. And of course, we have had five replays, so Just one. in reality, we're in the 19th end now. So the, start. the match's been brought right up by, <coughs> by Sheldon Bagby Harley. So we'll see the, the jack we delivered down towards the two metre mark. Is that mat quite some distance up the green? And it's going to be fine. Little, or is it? I don't know. Questioning uh, the straightening, the questioning any movement from Kernahan side. Yes, I thought there would be. Galvin Scott and the check seems to be agreed. It's it's up. So here is now Sheldon Bagley Howley on his backhand, been his favourite, <coughs> his favoured hand. Good opening bowl from Sheldon Begley Howley. Yeah, yeah, obviously a change in tactic, isn't it, Kevin? Because you know, previously it was like Kernahan who was looking to go closer to the two metre mark. Obviously, this isn't towards the two metre mark, but I think that was the the plan, bringing the mat all the way yeah, up. It certainly is. So Chad Grant trying to just get to the Sheldon Begley Howley bowl, just drops past on the outside of it. We've now got five little ones sitting over there now. The, the audience over there's grown from the... So here is Sheldon Baggy Harley now. Going to finish just under Jack Level. Chad Grant now will try to sit inside that of the Sheldon Bagley Harley bowl on that backhand side. Just question, might be on the wide side. And Gary Lawson saying, get as close as you can. Two shots to Sheldon Bagley Howley. And there's Caleb Hope now. From Gore. The front two have been played pretty consistently, actually. For Gary Lawson sits alongside the Jack does the Caleb Hope bowl. Just need Sheldon Begley Howley to move one. Yeah, certainly a, another bowl right in front of him. There you go. Sheldon Begley Howley bowl. Yeah, Kelvin Scott just going to fractionally shorter where he wanted to be. So, saying to Caleb Hope, hope you, if you drag the jack, that's fine. Because there's certain, I'll be trying to reach that bowl. Will the Mike Kernahan side? 13-11. As we watch this, the second bowl of Caleb's Hope. Go in behind the head. I'll be happy enough with that. Holding two. Kelvin Scott. Looks to beat. I'm 
that wide side, is it? Kernahan looking at it, but always looked to be on that wider side, out of the hand, and it is. Uh, Jamie Hill to come to end 14 of 18. This two looks to beat. He's got a good drawing bowl, has Jamie Hill. It's going to go by. Two and a lock was the call from Mike Kernahan. Three as Alex Reed's got up. So saying to Lance Pasco, draw one close. Yeah, need something here, Mike Kernahan. Gary Lawson's quartet dictating off the front. So had a good line, just a metre and a bit of weight. Jamie Hill, as Gary Lawson just said to him, take a metre of weight off. 13 11 to Mike Kernahan. And we'll see. Alex Reed got three lollipops out. So we watch this now. Lance Pasco having to try to. Draw to these counting bowls. If it sits on that one, it might cut it to just two. May well does. fell in. So should just be the Caleb Hope and that Sheldon Bagley two. Howley bowls, which are counting for Lawson as he strides to the mat. And he certainly might want to endeavour to put more bowls. He'd rather be on the other side of the head because fattens that target up like Kernahan certainly will play with reaching weight and Lawson yeah, on his backhand breaking gent nicely towards the head this bowl of Lawson's this looks pretty handy this bowl and I'm picking that'll count and it does so the shot now for Mike Kernahan one would think I like to try and play down on his forehand or to play with reaching weight on the backhand and nestling amongst those three, which is more than like the higher percentage bowl. So here is the Mike Kernan now on the mat. And he's going at it with plenty. And another we'll, kill. Another kill. We'll replay this end as well. And sixth this time. I think we're going to pick the bowls up again. And a bit of a right smile from my Gernard. Uh, what would have been the 19th end? If yeah. We hadn't had so many replays. So this will be the sixth replay. <laughs> As we fast approach three hours of game time. Of course, if this was section play, there would be a three hour time limit, but it's not the case in post section, and it will not be the case in this men's title decider, and rightly so. So we will replay the 14th end. And just checking the length again with Mike Kernahan. Maybe I think he's asked for the measure this time. As they brought the mat, mat up. And this time the umpire is going to come out to do the measure to see if it is the minimum length. And whether Sheldon Bagri Howley will be giving up the jack. And you can imagine that they'd want to have a fuller length end. Mike Kernan, if they do manage to pick up the jack here, it is deemed to be less than the minimum. And going down to the jack now, Mike Kernan standing close by to the umpire and up by a mere couple of inches, indicating it's fine. 
beautifully judged was the call from Mike Kernahan. Was that by a couple of inches? Yeah, that, I think an inch maybe at most. So, a replay of end 14 with Mike Kernahan, his side of Chad Grant, Kelvin Scott, Lance Pascoe, uh, leading the Gary Lawson combination of Sheldon Bagley, Harley, Caleb Hope. Jamie Hill and Gary Lawson by 13 shots to 11. Earlier, of course, we saw the Mike Kernahan side defeat Shannon McElroy in one semi-final, and Gary Lawson defeated Mike Carroll in the Stokes Valley side, beat him in the other semi-final, and we always knew that we were going to have, well, not, well, I didn't think such a long game, but we're certainly always going to be a very tight encounter with these two blackjack players, man. Member Lawson, of course, winner of 13 New Zealand titles. I'll read the date. And I'm good opening bowl here. Toucher from Chad Grant. And I was, I think this would be Mike Kernahan's eighth. I would, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it's getting up there for sure. As here is now Sheldon Bigby Harley. I'm going to remember as well Mike Kernahan's. Quartet has been playing since 8.30 this morning. They certainly have. So, uh, obviously haven't been on the, the green the entire time. Great ball. For the, for the better part of 10 hours, they have been. Sheldon Bigley Howley, who has been impressive off the front of the Gary Lawson side, drew right alongside the bowl of Jack Grants, which is the shot. So you'd expect Gary Lawson's four to be the fresher of the two. They didn't play their quarterfinal this morning. They played it last night, Tauranga Domain. So they didn't start playing until shortly after midday. And they played their semi-final. It went over Mike Carroll, as Kevin just mentioned. So longer day for Mike Kernahan's quartet. And the think that fresher younger legs as well when you've got Sheldon Bagri Howley and Caleb Hope. So Gary Lawson saying to Caleb Hope, draw down through the bowl, the Chad Grant bowl, which is sitting alongside the jack, draw down through it, move the bowl, move the jack, and just, you'll see it just floating past with a yard of weight through the head, missed underneath the line. I suppose on the flip side of that, Kevin, uh, is who's got the better mental conditioning because maybe that's when you swing it more in the favour of the more experienced players, the likes of Gary Lawson, Mike Kernahan, of course, Calvin Scott. Well, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the back end of these sides are both, you're both very, very experienced and, and you know, we... Because it's going to be... It looks like it. It's going to be... Anyone's game right to the 18th. So now Jamie Hill or Caleb Hope play his second bowl. And again, trying to get him to play down like he did with his first. Trying to get through to the shot bowl. It's on a good line. This bowl of Caleb Hope's just breaking its way down towards the head. Trying to get to the Chad Grant bowl. Had a weight on. But goes by and I heard Mike Kernan say, I don't care if you give it away. <laughs> um, he, he just really wants to get another bolt on the head. So here is Kelvin Scott trying to get past to give Mike Kernan another bolt and on the head, over the head, because we know that Jamie Hill will still he'll play that forehand reaching shot. But Mike Gary Lawson's been looking for and it's going to hang on that wide side with the weight so now Mike Kernahan saying right draw over here Lance Pascoe a game of game of chess going on here now because Gary Lawson's pretty much declared what shot they're going to play yeah so I wanted some cover to neat Amongst these two bowls. <laughs> Gary Lawson just saying to Jamie Hill, you'll get it, mate. So we'll see. Jamie Hill started playing bowls at Okahu Bay. About 10 or 11 years of age. 
They're going to disappear under the head with weight. An overcorrection there. So too wide with the first, narrow with the second. It's Jamie's father, Neville. Also played for New Zealand. So there's certainly a great bowling family. And the sister Kirsty, she's in the Auckland side. That will play in the end centre in a couple of weeks' time in, in Wellington. So it's one to the Kernan side. There's another generation of, of hills, isn't there? Is yes, there, there is. Kirsty's son, he's he's uh oh there's the oh there's the Brains Trust. Brains Trust. They're all there. One, two, three, four, five. Bowls New Zealand. I think uh, they're talking Cameron holding court. We're we talking about pay rises or something. I reckon they're talking about replayed ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could be. Yeah. So they are laughing, so it can't be about pay rises. <laughs> so here is Gary Lawson. He'll play down, trying to Turn the shot bolt, Chad Grant bolt, out of the head. And he's playing it the lock. He's playing it pretty quick to get to it, and gets the jack as well. Takes it all the way back. And is that a Jamie Hill bowl back there? No, it's in fact no. it'd be Lance Pesco okay. bowl back there. So one to the side of the Mike Kernan side as Mike Kernan makes his way back to the mat be playing the 14th end of 18 now 6th replayed end what has been an enthralling hard fought contest as we thought it would be between these two decorated players both nationally and internationally and Gary Lawson and Mike Kernan Right, and just trying to get under the bowl to get down to the jack. Running into Calvin Scott bowl. Unable to promote that to make it two. Still holding one. There's Kernahan. Lawson is one to play. So does his opposite. Makes his way half up the green. And then stalls, assessing the situation from there. Working out exactly what to play, and he wants to have another chat. So, can you see a number option on there? It's hard to see a, a number because there's not much past the jack. Well, there's, there's nothing past the jack, and yet, well, there's one level with the jack, and that being. And pa uh, Lance Pascoe's. So, I've just heard Gary Lawson saying I'm going to search up through there. May get the. Get the right part through, Hilly. You might spin yourself through. If you like it. A lot of conversation going on. So, we're going to see Lawson endeavour to try and punch through and get to the jack. One down. There's Gary Lawson. 13 11. Mike Kernahan leading, it's on its way, is that Lawson Bowl, we'll see as it breaks its way down there, runs into short bowls, turns another one bowl over, and that could well be two now. Yeah, maybe even three. Yeah, certainly that white bowl out to the left, pretty certain that is a Calvin Scott bowl. Calvin Scott, it's just whether this other white bowl here is a... Calvin's got bowled as well, or that's or whether that's the bowl of Caleb Hope. So in 14, 13, 11, holding two. This could be Mike Kerner can draw another one here. Just a little buffer as we head down the home run. Two was clearly indicated by Alex Reed. And Mike Kernan having to thread the needle through a whole lot of bowls to get. He's on a good line, has to get underneath this bowl to get to the counting area. Doesn't. And there's two. He had the call there from the players. So, four shot advantage now for Mike Kernahan after the replay 14th end, 15 11. Now leading Gary Lawson with four ends remaining 
in this men's final here at the Somerset National Fours at Bowls at Mount Monganui. where the sun is getting lower and lower into the sky. So Jack's been delivered on N15. We've certainly been going a while, 6.45 around about now. Yeah, just over three hours. Been going. And depending on how many more replayed ends. Well, the good chance is going to be at least one, isn't there? <laughs> Say so. <laughs> Law of averages of what we've seen so far. Well, we've had six, six out of the 14 have been <laughs> replayed. So we will, there will be another killed end at some stage between here and 18. Chad Grant draws his first bowl just slightly jack low, but set on a good line into the jack. Three-quarter length head. And it's now Sheldon Bagley Harley, who has been pretty impressively this afternoon in this final. Just endeavouring to get past the play, bowl of of the uh, Chad Grant bowl and does and make shot of it. <laughs> so on, <laughs> Alex is quite busy up there. It's taking <laughs> Taking a few photos, but now it's four Alex. So here now it's <laughs> Sheldon Bagley Howley. Gary Lawson likes his bowls, it breaks around, just feathers the bowl. And we'll see quickly from Alex now. He'll indicate in but a moment who's got the. Definitely two, it is two. <coughs> so, one shot to the Gary Lawson side. Bowl just got knocked up there by Kelvin Scott. Reaches it to one in this final of the Somerset National Fours here at, at Mount Monganui, where it's 15 11 to Mike Kernahan after 14 of 18 ends. That's a side. Chad Grant, Kelvin Scott, Lance Pascoe, Mike Kernahan. And they're playing, of course, Sheldon Baggy Harley, Caleb Hope, Jamie Hill, and Gary, Gary Lawson. And it is Gary Lawson holding one on this, the 15th end, with Mike Kernahan leading by 15 shots to 11. As we see, the Kelvin Scott bowl looks to be on a pretty good line as it's breaking down underneath the head. And that'll be the shot, no doubt about that. That's the shot, Kelvin Scott just slid underneath, sitting slightly jack low, but definitely the shot. So we'll see now. I would imagine Caleb Hope on that favoured backhand of his trying to get underneath to that of the shot bowl or the jack with a Sheldon Bagley Howley bowl sitting just in behind the head. He's going to go past. In fact, got a touch onto the bowl. Might have made two of it now for the uh, Kernahan side because it moved the jack in the middle and has made two of it. But it's a clear open vision there to the for Gary Lawson on that backhand drag to the jack so here is now Lance Pascoe playing on his forehand he'll certainly want to try and get in behind the head with holding two shots as Mike Kernahan on the wide side we'll now see Jamie Hill he'll certainly hunt down on that backhand side to get a touch to the jack that bowl's dead and there's, as we said is the call from Gary Lawson to draw down to Jamie Hill on that backhand to get a touch on the jack. Sheldon Bagley, Halley Bolt sitting, waiting. 
This looks on a good line, this bolt here. Jamie Hill's endeavouring to get to the jack. He's just going to get the jack. Got a touch on it. Moved it right out to the side. And I think it's still alive. Hasn't been killed, that one. But it's sitting out towards the boundary peg. And it'll be one, two. The, definitely the one bolt at Sheldon Bagley. Howley bolt out to the sides. The shot bolt. Lance Pasco now trying to draw to that jack which has moved right off, ta off the line this looks a good bowl here from Lance Pasco how far is it going to run it's towards the back of the rink is it going to stay up yes it will and still one to the Lawson combination yeah previous bowl of course stays in play even though it is in the ditch because it was a touch up move the jack out the left side it can't see it on the screen unfortunately it's in front of Mike Kernahan. So, 15th end. The skip's about to there you see it. play. And where that bowl, in fact, will, will come alive, that bowl of Jamie Hills. The indication is that it's out. The bowl, it looks as though it is out, and it is. Didn't come alive, did the Jamie Hill bowl. Yeah, Sheldon Bagley Howley, I think, was right on that boundary line indicated that was not in play Jamie Hill ball so Kernahan Mike Kernahan now with the jack right out towards the side peg and you can see it clearly there right out on the side and Kernahan one of the masters of the draw shot Green note certainly tightening up and changing now as the and he's not going to come alive either. It might turn him and dead. So now this it may look easy, but it's certainly not because the playing and unplayed territory and the jack of course is sitting just inside the peg and the indication it's the one shot to Gary Lawson's side as they trail 15-11 as we come to the back end of the 15th end, he'll play his first bowl of two. Yeah, I suppose I'm worried about is if you play on the backhand side, you might run into the short bowls. So Lawson as well, playing on his forehand, just hoping to come back into the rink. He needs to come inside the jack. And he's going to be, I think, stuck out as well. Stuck out wide, so it's another one that's going to be on counting that's three in a row now Jamie Hill, Mike Kernahan and Gary Lawson so the line for Mike Kernahan it's obviously very tricky it is, it's, a, yeah, it, it's really to try and draw it inside the line and this looks a better width bowl this bowl of is it going to come back, this bowl of Mike Kernahan's it's certainly on a better line and he likes it, it's got to finish dead on the line it's to the jack to be out. shot no. Is it, is it, well, obviously, our, our angle is coming from the side, so it's not exactly showing it accurately. So they is seem convinced it's in. There's been no complaints from the opposition. So that's a tremendous bowl. I think you'll see Lawson might well play with weight to try and remove that. What is the shot bowl of Mike Kernahan's? And he's in. He's on the drive. Is Gary Lawson trying to get to that Gary Lawson bowl on the backhand drive goes by. And so it will be Mike Kernahan. Another to Mike Kernahan. Wonderfully won with that beautiful draw shot. We saw it I'm playing to his strength there, Mike Kernahan. Lawson likewise playing aggressively with weight. Unable to get rid of that Kernahan bowl. And so it's 16 11 now. That was a big bowl, really. By, by, oh, well, that was only the one shot at that point in time, Brendan. It was a big bowl because it's another end gone. We score one, just broadens oh, that gap slightly. And very difficult draw line they had to play to. But Kernahan, as we know, an expert on the draw. And that was the right shot for Gary Lawson to play the drive to try and get to that, the shot bowl. So three to go. 16-11 to Mike Kernahan, Lance Pascoe, Kelvin Scott and Chad Grant. Of course, Grant, uh, Chad Grant and Lance Pascoe, Pascoe striving for their first 
national title, as is Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagley Howley in the Gary Lawson side. So, a lot to play for for these players. 16 11 to Gary Lawson to uh, Mike Kernhan as we play the 16th end of 18. And Sheldon Bagley Howley draw the shot again. He's been very impressive, has the young. The young Gore lead. Yeah, more often than not, he's got the better of his opposite, Chad Grant. Really, Mike Kernan's been pretty exceptional because a lot of the time he's been the one who's come up with the shot for his quartet. Certainly has. He certainly had to, especially at those early stages when, of course, they were 7-2 down and... Uh, Kernahan was called on in a big way. Good ball there, though, from Chad Grant. Won't be shot, though. But Onion Shield has made its way out of bowls Mount Monganui and has now made its way greenside as well. Uh, trophy first awarded back in 1888. That's yeah, a great trophy. That was before any of us were born, surprisingly. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> so... Sheldon Begley Howley just dropping by with weight, but definitely holding the shot as we play in 16 of 18 in this final of the Somerset National Fours here at Mount Monganui. And this, of course, will bring to a close the National Championships. Remembering the singles and pairs were played in Christchurch at Papua Nui and earlier on in January. And it's a good bowl here coming in from Kelvin Scott. This is going to get close to the shot. Bowl sits on the bowl of Sheldon Begley Howley's. Well, Kelvin Scott has had his moments, hasn't he? Come up with some big bowls for Kernahan. So Gary Lawson saying to Sheldon Begley Howley, you can reach up to the bowl. You can make two of it. How far is it going to come back? It's certainly got... A good line coming into that shot that Gary Lawson called. And going to finish Jack Level. He won't mind that at all. Another bowl on the head for Lawson to play to. And he'll be, he'll, uh, I'm sure, the next one he'll ask for. Caleb Hope to perhaps play with another yard of weight. So Kelvin Scott endeavouring to replicate his first bowl. Where he drew the shot for his skip, but he's going to be under the line. And yeah, that just inside that last bowl of Kelvin Scott actually gives Caleb Hope a good line into the jack or shot bowl. The shot bowl is obviously what he wants, it's on its way. And the forehand, the tall 21 year old Gore player. Gary Lawson's looking at this one. Is it going to cut under the head or get all the way to the jack? It is going under the head. Had more weight on it as well. Mike Kernahan, same draw here. Very <laughs> not saying he's laid back, but he just is. He makes things doesn't nice and simple. He isn't does. It? He doesn't sort of overplay things, does he, Brendan? He so we watch this, Bob. Oh, Lance Pascoe's. Uh, basically, uh, he knows that all the players he's playing with have played a lot of bowls. They know that the shots to play. If they want a bit of direction, he'll obviously give it. Absolutely. You have faith in those players that you got with you. So, there, Gary Lawson just making sure that Jamie Hill, there's that line down through there under the short bowl of Kelvin Scott getting down to the shot bowl. And we watch this bowl of Jamie Hill's. Is it under the Kelvin Scott bowl? If it is, it's on a good line. It's going to be outside it, though. And we'll go by. And Mike Kernhan saying to Lance Pascoe, don't have to change too much. You went very far away with your first. You endeavour to beat his last bowl, Will. Lance Pascoe. Played some big bowls at certain times in this match, has Pascoe. Maybe not drawing the shot, but certainly second shot. Now this, now this really gives Gary Lawson the opening because you can see there, Brendan, there's that port down through those two bowls. You get through that port, you're very, very close to the shot bowl. 
So here is now that, that Jamie Hill bowl. And he's he's not going to be under it. Great effort was the call you heard from Gary Lawson chasing his 14th New Zealand title and this is the final of the Somerset men's national fours. Yeah, looks like Mike Kernan the way it's going at the moment maybe denying him though. And himself moving it a step closer to Gary Lawson's title. Still well, this is a big a end. To be played, though. This is a big end, this one, because Mike Kernahan scores, get even at just the one, just makes that drop harder. Means that Wilson must score on that 17th end. So you see this first bob of Mike Kernahan's on this, the 16th end. I mean, he won't be happy with that bob. He may have cut the jack line off though for Gary Lawson down through there I'm sure he wasn't deliberately he wouldn't have been trying to do that so here is Lawson now certainly playing with more weight he's close in fact rocked on the ball oh, Bagri Howley See a hands on a hit moment there for Bagri Howley. <laughs> the one ball he didn't want knocked away. He certainly was close. Now, Mike Kernan on it. Get another ball reasonably close, I would imagine, because there's yeah, a two shot. holding one. Gets rid of the ball. It makes two. Would make two to Gary Lawson if his was to stay there. Just walking past us now is Gary Lawson. A bit of a shake of the head there. Knew he was close, and he certainly was close. To get in that right result, as we see now, Mike Kernan on his backhand leading 16 11 as we come to the end of the 16th of 18 ends in this final of the National Somerset National Men's Fours here at Mount Monganui. And it's now breaking in towards the head, trying to get to the bowl of Kelvin Scott, so Lance Pascoe's bowl, an applause there from the team still just the one that's another bowl on the head which is the important thing for uh, Mike Kernahan as Kelvin Scott would just move a fraction <laughs> playing obviously for three hours plus, forgotten the instructions delivered Quite some have. time ago. So here now is Gary Lawson on the mat. Big bowl, one down. He'll certainly be playing to reach that shot bowl. Looks to be under the line, but anything, of course, can happen, and he'll make shot of that, I think. Everything rolled around. Yeah, confirmed. So, well played, Gary Lawson. Picking up the shot. Much needed as well, as you said. If that was Kernan picking up shot there, that would have been a big six-shot lead. But instead, it's down to four. 16-12 now, Mike Kernan. Another Gary Lawson after 16 of the 18 ends. Tight ends up bit more once again. Uh, I think we're going to see the mat back again. And a good talk now, Sheldon Bagley, Howley, and yeah, and the mat is going back. They're going to get to the more consistent length, and I think we're going to be looking at back towards the three-quarter length, but the mat is right back on the two-metre mark, playing down towards the port of Tauranga end. On this, the 17th end of 18. Uh -huh, we're going long. Oh, no, change awesome. of mind. Just, yeah, just was in two minds himself there. And then just, just as Sheldon Bagri Halley was about to roll down the jack, Sheldon yelled out by Gary Lawson. He says, right, we'll go long. So, jack's been delivered. 
is it going to stay up? No, it's not. That's going into the ditch. So we'll have the replay of that. And right back, yes, and now we've seen the call from the mat is right back. Mikey has said to Chad Grant, make sure the mat's right back. And it is right back. He plays around with it, but it is right meter. back on the two meter mark. And right down here. Yeah, Mike Kernan just say just down here. So <laughs> I think we're still going to play the same length that Gary Lawson really wanted to play as well. Yeah, I think so. So obviously Mike Kernan is happy with that. He's like, yep, if you want to play that length, I'm happy to play that length. See if Chad Grant can deliver. And it's certainly not at the two metre. <coughs> More of that three quarter length in. So it's 16 12, Mike Kernahan as we commence in 17. Certainly been. As we expected, a tight and very, very competitive game. As we see, Sheldon Bagley Halley gonna yeah, just go in behind the head, over the head. He won't be too concerned about that. Will Lawson and Chad Grant, he'll follow that ball up. Chad Grant, of course, now playing out of the Tarrant Point Club in Sydney on his forehand, formerly of Rotorua, winner of the New Zealand Trust Open Singles. And this ball's going to be really short, this one. And that's it's really wide, too. Yeah, well, this green has tightened up, Brenda. Now the sun's gone, temperature's gone, dropping down, completely different. And the green will just close up. And that's actually needs that, you'll see, really needs that extra weight on the delivery point. As we see, there's a good bowl here from Sheldon Bagley Harley. Very, very good bowl from the lead of Gary Lawson's going to sit. Jack Level. You'll notice now the bowls, as they draw, Jack Level aren't running away. They're not running that meter away. They're sort of hanging in around the area. And that indicates that it has slowed down. So here is Chad Grant. Endeavouring to draw the shot for his lead, Mike Kernahan. Not quite going to get all the way, is it? Great attempt. It may get all the way. It is all the way. Yeah, much better second bowl there from Chad Grant. After wayward first. Good adjustment. Backhand we'll see from Caleb Hope, his favoured backhand side. So it might just run into the Sheldon Bagley Halley bolt, and it does. And that makes definitely it shot the bowl of Caleb Hopes and behind the head. Yeah, not what he was after. <laughs> A bit of luck. Worked out well. Kelvin Scott now came back, had major back surgery last year, and Virtually was out of commission for a good part of the season. Gonna get to the bowl or the jack, gets the jack, moves it round the corner. It will still be down. Oh, will it? Yes, well, not, no, it is. It's the shot. And you, Kelvin Scott, now back after major back surgery. And will be, of course, part of the Canterbury side as well. And that in the centre. So Gary Lawson just saying to Caleb Hope, you've got the weight, you've got a chance. Has it got the weight? No, no, it hasn't. It's going to pull up short. So Mike Kernan saying to Kelvin Scott, same bolt. Yeah, too much weight with the first. Got a bit lucky. Caleb Hope with the second, not enough. Obviously when you do have that reaching weight, you, you make your own luck, don't you? you certainly do. As we watch this pop of Kelvin Scott's, Mike Kernan urging it on, but not going to get all the way. And Gary Lawson saying to Jamie Hill, draw a touch it, you make two of it. So here is Jamie Hill trying to get to the jack, make a touch on it and move it towards the Caleb Hope bowl, the uh, Sheldon Bagley Halley bowl. Gary Lawson liking this bowl as it's breaking down towards the head. This is close, this bowl. 
of Jamie Hills, and that'll certainly be the shot. Mike Kernan down, just saying to Lance Pesco, follow that up, reach it. And he is endeavouring to do so. Looks wide. And it will be wide it's outside the head. And Gary Lawson just saying to Jamie Hill, you can get a roll out of the Kelvin Scott bowl. Be good. You can make three of it. Or a touch on the jack would be of a similar result. Yeah, Sheldon Bagri Hall is interested again because this doesn't look too dissimilar from the last one. Very close. Very close. Made it two. That's two, definitely. Well Both played. played by Jamie Hill. Wonderful bowling from the number three for Gary Lawson's quartet. Now what can Lance Pasco do in reply? He had probably the right line. It was too much weight for the previous one. But more interested this time round. Has it got the weight? This is closest bowl of Lance Pasco's. Going to sit and fall over and does... That'll make shot of it. Well played. Three great bowls out of four by the number threes. Jamie Hill, two fine bowls. But upstaged, one even better bowl by Lance Basco. Low fives. And the, even the low five from Mike Gurner. And that's the most you're going to get out of him. It's a big Beyond the handshake. He must have been happy with it. <laughs> Gary Lawson now. He'll follow that same line as... Jamie Hill and Lance Pascoe, and everything's to Lawson's advantage if he was fortunate enough to get a touch on the jack. Definitely Mike Kernan holding the shot. This bowl of Lawson's looks to be on that narrow side, and it is going to just fade away on that narrow side. This now becomes a very, very important couple of bowls to be played in the context of this match, Brenton, because, you know, there's a chance for Gary Lawson, of course, if he was to move the jack around the corner, could make three of it or two of it. Yeah, well, we've seen A4 in this match, haven't we? But we have. The majority have been ones. There's been a, a three or maybe two threes. There was a f we had a three to Gary Lawson on the uh, second end, a four to Mike Kernan on the sixth, and then a three to Mike Kernan on the eleventh. Big numbers have been tough to come by. It's been a pretty low-scoring match. Well, that three was, remember, that was when the jack got moved right ahead of the side mm. and Gary Lawson's bowl went into the, you know, didn't stay alive. Here's Kernton changing his hand. Hasn't played many down on this hand, but trying to get to the, I would say, the cover bowls, trying to get to where the trail shot does. So here's the call from Gary Lawson. said, got to try and get there. So that means... He won't be shy of weight, one would think. Trying to get up to either the Lance Pasco bowl or that touch on the jack. So it's on its way is the Lawson bowl. Looking towards the head now. Is it going to come all the way back? Urging it in towards the head now. Urging it to the head. That's it made a big difference. Should have grabbed the shot, I think. I would think so. Wait for the indication. Maybe it's not far away. In fact, it's two going up. Yeah, two goes up from Alex Reed, so it's knocked away the Pasco bowl enough. So, Mike Kernahan, I'm sure now. Oh, even three now has been indicated. It is three. It's been indicated. Mike Kernahan makes his way back to the mat. Pressure on everyone now, including the lollipop man, Alex Reid. Yeah, he's went, took him a while to do that. Here is now Mike <laughs> Kernahan. Putting the heat on, Kevin Eckler. Wow, well, yeah. Everyone's going to be at the top of their game at the business Certainly end, do. don't they? Here is now this Mike Kernahan bolt on this, the 17th end. Is it going to get back far enough to the jack to reduce I the think count? So. No, it's not. Uh, so, a huge, huge bowl from Gary Lawson. Turned one down into, kick away 
At least one's been knocked away so far. Knock away two. Now is it three? Oh, it's Pasco looking over things. We've had very few measures in this game, haven't we? There has been. So they've just looked pretty much with this the one naked one eye. Said, see yep, the measure here. Me, but the measure. What's well, very crucial measure as well because a big difference between two and three because okay, two shot game or a one shot game going into the 18th and final end. But three it is. Huge, huge ball from Gary Lawson. One down, turns it into three up. 16 <coughs> 15 it is now. Ready for the 18th and final end. What's your chance of an extra end here? And only be just with it. We've had six replayed ends. Well, something's going to happen. Well, we see the Ben beside me wanted to witness a 25 end game. I think there's very much a chance Close of it happening. To it. So the conversation. We didn't have the tea break in the middle. No, we didn't. We didn't. So, great ball by Gary Lawson. Gives it a big, big deep breath as he walks past us. He knows he got his side right into this game now, right into the final. Was that magnificent bowl that he played on the 17th end. Won the difference now. Kernhan leading 16-15. Jack's been delivered as we play the 18th end. Right out in front of us here. So here is now Sheldon Bigley Howley. So will it be a first title for Sheldon Bagley Howley and Caleb Hope in number 14 for Gary Lawson? Or will it be the first for Chad Grant and Lance Pascoe? Well, all options are possible here, aren't they? Only one shot between these two great fours playing the 18th and final end. A great start from... Sheldon Bagri Howley off the front for Gary Lawson. Certainly is. Draws very adjacent to the Jack. As we see now, Chad Grant trying to get down to. He's close as well to the Jack. And just got a touch on the Jack, on the back of the Jack. And moved it. Air effort from Chad Grant. Well, the good thing is he was up. Brenton, he was, in, you know, gave it a chance to get to the jack. Okay, look, but that's Sheldon Bagley Howley on his backhand. He's been pretty impressive. Well, he's been very impressive, in fact, as the young goal player in this final. And Mike Kernan just saying to Chad Grant, that you're more than likely. About a yard quick, although he did get a touch on the jack. Well, didn't want to be short, though. So it's on its way, on the backhand. Trying to get down to that shot ball. And it's got weight on. And we'll go in behind the head. So definitely, it's to, at this point, to the Gary Lawson side, but... A lot of bowls to be played yet. So here's Caleb Hope now. Another the young Gore player. And it's Mike Kerner and Kevin start to have memories of last year. And he had a <coughs> decent lead playing the last few. But he now gets snatched it from him. So certainly that thought was there for sure. So now here is the very experienced Calvin Scott on his backhand. Do you mean to draw the shot for Mike Kernahan? Question now, how is it going to pull all the way in? Going to go by. Will in fact be second shot. And it is second shot. I'm just saying to Kind of hope you just got to beat that last bowl. 16 15. Mike Kernahan leading. Doesn't like this bowl. Did Caleb Hope he let it go? He saw the head go down very quickly. Knew he was on the quick side. The call from Mike Kernahan to Calvin Scott. 
just a meter. Your experienced draw player is Kelvin Scott on its way. Certainly got less weight than the first. Gonna just break under to the head. And nice Jack level. Still one. It. Still one, certainly to Sheldon Bagri Howley. The bolt just short of the jack. But not a bad effort that time from Calvin Scott. Not Jamie Hill, the first of the uh, threes to play. Good line here from Jamie Hill. There's a good bowl from Hill. Just going to get past. He does the Caleb Hope. The Sheldon Bagley Howley bowl. And that's definitely two now. 15 inches short is the call from Mike Kernahan. Lance Pascoe now. I don't think he likes this one. We just turned away on the bowl. Looks pretty good from where we're sitting, though. How far is it going to run, though? It's a bit wide. More than likely had reasonably good weights. It's two. Gary Lawson. N17. Might go down in the history book. <laughs> Brendan is the end that possibly remembers 14th New Zealand title, as we see. The Jamie Hill Bowl. Just go by, still be two. Lance Pascoe. Will this be his last bowl? This National Fours final on its way. We saw Lawson play that magnificent bowl on the 17th end. And watch this bowl of Lance Pascoe's draw in round and behind the head. Looks pretty good to me. Just see what it is. That's the shot from Lance Pascoe. Great bowl there under pressure. Wonderfully done. Yeah, by Pascoe. Needed as well, as you say. Because front three for Gary Lawson had done a good job. Drawn a couple of shots. Pascoe coming up with the pressure bowl. Now it's up to the skips. Gary Lawson to play first. On the backhand. Steadies himself. 16-15, Mike Kernan. And Mike Kernan holding the shot. We saw Gary Lawson that last end play that big bolt to turn one down into three up. On its way now. Is it going to get to the jack? It's on a good line. Going to get to the... Got to the shovel and Bagley Howley bowl. Turn it over. Go the fist pump. That's the shot straight back. Wonderfully played. Who promoting said, the Bagri Howley who bowl. Who said extra end? <laughs> I did just for Ben's benefit. Because <laughs> that would in effect be a 25th end because we've had six replayed ends. And so we're it, joking off here yesterday uh, with Ben, who's mastermind behind this production here. He hadn't, didn't realise that they played 25 end games at the Taranaki Fours. And we're potentially being treated to one here. So here is now Mike Kernahan on the backhand. One down. Don't like the weight. Certainly don't like the weight. So Gary Lawson. Oh. One bowl left. To make two of it in the win. Kernan still has a shot to play, of course. So they're agonising over this one, trying to work out firstly what they can play to put all the pressure back on Kernahan, because obviously at the moment, one will make it an extra end. So Mike Kernan, you notice, just goes and sits down at the back of the ring. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> no drama. We'll just wait and see what Gary does and then... I'll see what I have to do. So here is now Gary Lawson holding one. Well, you talked to Joe Edwards about that as well. So important to, you know, cock on and cock off. You can't just be on all the time, especially for such a long game, three and a half hours. Here is Lawson now on the backhand, trailing 16-15, holding one on the last end. 
I just question that weight. I question the weight. And it's not going to get down to the counting area. So at this stage, it's an extra end we've got at this point in time, unless Mike Kernahan can draw the shot here with his last bowl on this the 18th end. The final, the men's fours at the Somerset Nationals. Yeah, anyone can do it. Mike Kernahan can. One of the great draw bowlers coming on his backhand side. Well, the final got bowl of the 18th and final end. He's going to ask him a bit too much of it, though. And we are going to an extra end in the final of the men's fours here at the Somerset Nationals at Bowls Mount Monganui. They've had the toss already. Quick smart. Well, Brennan, at the end of the 15th end, of course, it was Mike Kernhan leading 16 shots to 11. And then a one. And then the big bowl, a one to... Um, Gary Lawson on the 16th and then that huge bowl of Gary Lawson's on the 17th when he turned one down into three up and then the one there and of course now it's that 16 all after 18 ends and you know hats off yet again to Gary Lawson because that three that he converted from one down certainly got the Lawson side right back into this match. Yeah, I think it's only apt. We play an extra end. It's been such a tight contest. Yes, Mike Kernahan did lead 16 11. Three ends to play. Gary Lawson having to play some wonderful bowls to level the match, take us to where we're at. But there's been very little between these two fours. Well, and of course, early on, Gary Lawson was leading 7 2. So they've both come back from deficits and caught themselves up, got in front. So and that was sort of to be expected from the calibre of these players, as we see now. The first bowl, Sheldon bagley Halley go in behind the jack, right back to the centre line. So, Chad Grant. His first bowl of this extra end. Just going to go by and sit outside the Sheldon Bagley Howley Bowl still a good crowd really here and I know there's a number inside as well so here is a second bowl of Sheldon Bagley Howley and this is on a good line this bowl too Going to sit outside the jack line, go by a, a metre. So we played 18 and had, what, six, seven kills? Yeah, it's six, I believe. Six replayed ends. So I suppose in effect, this is a 25th end. Officially just the extra end to decide this match. So, Chad Grant, ball. I'll pull up short. He'd be disappointed with that. On the backhand, we'll see now. Caleb Hope. Front two. Kelvin, the uh, front two, Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagley Halley have been pretty consistent. Gary Lawson coaxing this bowl on. That'll be the shot itself. Sits just alongside and lower the jack. Good bowl. Kelvin Scott now picking will endeavour to draw down on his forehand underneath the bowl of Chad Grants to get to the shot bowl or the jack. Mike Kernhan's looking at this bowl as it's breaking in towards the head, won't quite run all the way. Fair effort. Of course, the Mike Kernan side, they do have the last bowl. And, you know, <laughs> I know Brendan has said it before, but, you know, it's 9 eye <laughs> with Mike Kernan. We only had 
that little that buffer of a lead. Look at Dean Elga. Just slipped away. This time, though, it was really one ball from Gary Lawson on it. It's 17th in, which really. So, interesting. Gary Lawson not now worrying about the head, saying to Caleb Hope, you can get back here. And really what he's saying to the Mike Kernahan side, um, you guys have got to draw the shot. Yeah, you beat that Caleb Hope one, which is just to the left of the jack. So now Kelvin Scott with his last ball. As Brent had said, wasn't very far away, really, with his first ball. And he needed a couple of rolls. As we watch this second ball of Kelvin Scott's, it's also going to just pull up, lower the jack. So Gary Lawson saying to Jamie Hill, draw a toucher on the backhand. I'm sure Lance Pascoe thought when he drew the shot he might have played the winning shot on that last end. I had the call to Lance Pascoe. Just need a couple of feet of weight on that backhand. On this extra end. Is it going to get all the way? Is the Lance Pascoe pole urging it on? Urging the pole on? Just going to. Needed an extra foot of weight. Well, Great line. That's yeah, actually perfect. That's made it quite difficult now for Mike Kernan, where that bowl, in fact, is finished in that front line to the jack. So here now is Jamie Hill on his backhand. There's another good ball from Jamie Hill, and in fact, we'll count. It is two. Now same to Lance Pascoe. You can reach up there. Reach up through with some searching weight. Does Lance Pascoe on the backhand trying to get down to that? Mike Kernan's down looking at this bowl as it breaking towards the head, trying to get to the jack. And my goodness, that was How is close. That? No, not got anything there. Unbelievable. Well, that, I haven't seen a replay of that, but that was close. Very close was Lance Pascoe to getting the result that they were looking for. They change over. And Mike Kernan just, as you said, just going to sit down, time out. Yeah. And switch off. Gary Lawson on the flip side, staying engaged and having a chat with Jamie Hill and Sheldon Bagri Howley as he works out what to play. Of course. He's defending here. He holds the shot. So Lawson will play <coughs> on his forehand. On this, the extra end. After the 18 ends, it's all tied up. 16 apiece. <coughs> after Mike Kernahan led 16-11 at the end of 15. So, Kernahan, I'm sure he'll be trying to play that push and prod shot. Reach up to the bowl. And if there's anyone capable of playing that, it's this guy. Two bowls remain for Mike Kernahan in this final in the Somerset National Fours. Runner up last year. Doesn't want to be runner up again. So here is Kernahan on that backhand search, looking for the shot bowl, breaking down towards the head now. 
In fact, it's moved the jack back. And of course, that moved it back to where there's a Jamie Hill bowl there as well. So, what does Mike Kernan do here? Two shots. Not that shots really matter. One's enough in this predicament. So the Gary Lawson side, all down, having a look. What do we play here? Oh dear, says <laughs> Gary Lawson as he walks past us with a wry smile. <laughs> yeah, well done, Gary. That's pressure time. Last bowl now for Gary Lawson. Host Mike Kernahan. We'll play after him. What does he do here? He's got to think. Another step ahead. He's got to try and get in the brain of Mike Kernan and go, what is Mike Kernan going to try and play here? Well, the last thing he wants to do is to give Mike Kernan a shoulder on that side. It's very difficult to see. A shoulder would give something for Kernan to run into. So, <clears throat> Mike Kernan. So... Is Mike Kernahan going to drive that front pole? You mean the, so the white pole to the left? Yep. Because <laughs> if he could, he could well dislodge both of those poles and have got a Chad Grant pole just back in behind here. Last pole. Kernahan. This is the match. On the mat. 16 all extra in and he is going for that drive that we spoke about to try and get to uh, and got this front pole that's it though it's shake hands time hasn't been able to find the mark and it is Gary Lawson who wins a 14th national title here at Bowls Mount Monganui. the quartet of Gary Lawson Jamie Hill, Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagri Howley uh, successful on an extra end taking down Mike Kernahan, Lance Pascoe, Calvin Scott and Chad Grant it is a maiden national title for both Sheldon Bagri Howley and Caleb Hope, another for Jamie Hill and a record extending 14th for Gary Lawson Well we saw as we expected Brennan we saw it, we would see a dramatic final and we certainly were not disappointed we have seen that here uh, this afternoon and early this evening and to me the big bowl came on the 17th end when Gary Lawson was trailing Mike Kernan by 16 to 12 it was 16 11 to Mike Kernan after 15 a one to Gary Lawson on the 16th and then we saw the big bowl from Gary Lawson when he was one down on the 17th end and played up dislodged the shot bowl and made three of it to go to uh, to take it then to that to uh, that 16 15 and then a one of course on the 18th end and then of course the extra end we saw the Gary Lawson side really controlled the head quite right throughout really on that extra end and Mike Kernahan uh, just couldn't get the shot to give him his title but what can we say about Gary Lawson 14 New Zealand titles now this guy is never out of it he was down he was up 7-2 then behind by 16 shots to 11 and Lawson being the fighter that he is that's why he's won 14 New Zealand titles and Gary Lawson wins another title now his 14th the first of course for Sheldon Bagley Howley and Caleb Hope full marks to Gary Lawson who said he'd take these younger guys under his wing and play in the Nationals and win them a New Zealand title and that he has duly done Gary Lawson now making his way over to Brenton Van Nisseroy where Brenton will interview him so here is now Brendan Van Nisseroy and Gary Lawson as Gary Lawson celebrates his 14th New Zealand title and I pass it over to Brenda Van Nisseroy and Gary Lawson now joined by Gary Lawson, successful skip of the men's four. Well, Gary, a 14th national title for you, but that final had it absolutely everything. Talk us through the emotions right now. Oh, you know, just unbelievable. Like we, I just think the sort of things weren't going. You know, the rubber the green wasn't really working for us early, and I said the boys just got to hang in there. And you know, I thought 
the young fellas played awesome. You know, first New Zealand title for them, that's what it's all about, really. And, um, you know, they kept their nerve, and I thought they played the last three or four ones really good. You know, gave us a chance, and he played a good bowl. You know, got a good one on the second last end, which kept us in the game, obviously. But, oh, no, just, I'm thrilled for the young fellas, eh? Like, you know, they, they just hung in there really tough, and I thought it was a good effort for them. Yeah, Sheldon Bagri Howley, very consistent off the front. Caleb, hope you're number two. How did it all come about? Why did you decide to play with the youngsters? Oh, the young fellas have been asking me for three or four years now, and I said, I'll just, I'll, I'll give you a go one day. I'll just see. And McElroy and Grantham sacked Tilly and I, so we thought, yeah, we'll give them a go. And um, I, look, I, you know, they, they've had a couple of battles, you know, in, in a couple of previous rounds. But you know, I was really proud of them today. I thought they they hung in awesome, and um, they, you know, they show, you know, they've got talent, and they're going to be really good for New Zealand for a long time. Yeah, and talk about the role of your number three as well, Jamie Hill, that's played in the success. Yeah, well, Hilly, you know, he, he was just going to be the rock, you know, you know, between me and the and the young fellas, and you know, he was awesome. But oh, you know, look, look to, you know, full credit to Cooney and his team. I mean, you know, Scotty and and uh, and Lance are really good mates of mine, so you feel a bit sorry for them. But you know, obviously, we were wrapped to win. Yeah, what was going through the mind? Uh, I think 16, uh, 11 down, with four ends to play, you managed to, to claw it back, and then obviously, how did you execute in that extra end? Well, we just, you know, we only need to get one or two at a time. You know, we weren't trying to get numbers and. Um, you know that just you know we just got a you know it was amazing end when we got the three you know so that was that was good but you know you can only play the shots of the boys got the balls in the head and that was what they did really well so look it was a it was an awesome final and um, you know like just thrilled and sort of still a little bit numb don't, not quite sure how we got out of it but we'll take it and a 14th national title record extending how high can you go now oh look I don't know look I, I say this every time Brendan you know the 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 14th is just as good as the first. They all mean the same. They're, they're hard to win. You never know when you're going to win your last. And you know, I've been with a lot of boys who've won their first and never won another one. So you know, these boys, I'm just so happy to be with them, winning their first title. You know, it's something they'll never forget. And you know, if they don't win another one, they still won one. So it's awesome. You get to lift the Dominion Shield very shortly uh, for the first time. Brought back a trophy, what first present in 1888. That makes it extra special. That's awesome. You know, like it's good. You know. And the, we said, oh, we you know, can't drink out of it. I said, well, because it drinks on top of it, it'll be all, all good tonight. Well, enjoy it. Go pick out that trophy. Thanks, mate. Cheers, boys. Uh, Gary Lawson, the successful skip, uh, about to be presented with the Dominion Shield, winning along with Jamie Hill, Caleb Hope and Sheldon Bagri-Howley. They are your champions here at the Somerset National Fours. Now, also this afternoon with that victory, I've just been informed there will be a special presentation uh, made to Gary Lawson on achieving his 14th New Zealand title. In fact, there's another one that goes in from another event and he'll get another award this afternoon, which they have deemed... We have reached the end of the Somerset National for 2020. Taken a while to get there. Congratulations to those two teams just playing in that magnificent final. And congratulations to those that have been involved in the semi-finals prior to that that have been patient enough to wait for us here and we won't make you wait too much longer there's just a couple of things that i would like to speak about before we start handing out some trophies and medals um, firstly i'd like to introduce those to my left on my far left mr mike spring who is a former president of bowls new zealand and will be well known to those of you from the bay of plenty area at least helen stallard to his right Helen's obviously been the engine room of the operation on the corner of the building over there. And Helen, thank you for everything you've done, not just in this tournament, but throughout the season for us as well. And Alex Reid, who has been something of an understudy to Helen, this, uh, this event. And uh, you've probably seen him walking up the green a few times in the last three or four hours or whatever it's been. So, yeah, <laughs> too many times, fair enough. Um, I do just want to acknowledge a few other people. Our umpires, who have been diligent throughout the event at all of our venues and uh, represented here today by Sue um, Rossiter, thank you, and by Robert England. Thank you, both of you, on behalf of all of the umpires that were involved in this event. Um, also, I'd like to thank the Bowls Bay of Plenty Centre and the eight clubs um, that have helped us to deliver this event over the last four days. Aroa, Rotorua, Nongataha, Tipuki, Tauranga South, Tauranga Domain and Matua Bowling Clubs obviously before today. There are many volunteers for their support and, uh, and obviously this fantastic venue here that we've been blessed to be involved with. Um, Rod, Garrick, Keith, Athol, Margie, you and your team have been wonderful to work with and we thank you all for your outstanding contribution to this event.
Rod, are you handy? Man, good man. We have a little plaque to acknowledge your involvement in this event. Would you please come forward and receive that from Mike? It's a massive undertaking putting something like this, like this together and uh, Bowles Mount Monganui and Club Mount Monganui have been really first class and I'm sure you'll all agree that it's been a tremendous effort from them and their, their uh, band of merry men and women. Thank you Rod on behalf of us all. Dean, where are you? He's probably got sprinklers going or something but... Um, Greenkeeper is obviously a very, very important part of any event and um, Dean, you have been the last one involved today but by no means the only one. We thank all of the Greenkeepers that have been involved at our eight, uh, at our eight venues and, um, and your Greens here have been a credit to you. Thank you very much for your collective commitment across the eight venues. Um, to the staff of Club Mount Monganui, again, just a great job. They've, nothing's been too much trouble and we're really very, very pleased with how the venue has delivered this event. And of course, finally, to our spo event sponsor, Somerset. Doesn't happen without the uh, commercial partners and a wonderful relationship that Bowls New Zealand's fortunate to have with Somerset, and long may that continue. We're very grateful for those, um, for the benefit of our players, and of course, the event itself and the TV coverage that goes along with it. To our presentations, um, bronze medalists, the two losing semi-finalists, can I have Shannon McElroy, Peter Hodson, Seamus Curtin and Tony Grantham to come up and receive their bronze medals from Mike. Uniforms blending in with the night sky. And Mike Carroll, would you please bring James Cameron Powell, Stephen Bryan and John Bryan forward for your bronze medals. Well played, guys. To our runners-up, the silver medalists, fantastic final. I think everyone thoroughly enjoyed it. I think we began to wonder whether it was ever going to end. You guys just kept us entertained for hours, so well done. Mike, would you bring, please bring Lance Pascoe, Chad Grant and Kelvin Scott with you for your silver medals. Give them a hand. Well done, guys. And as the day dawns, we bring the winning champions of 2020, Somerset National Fours. Gary, please bring forward Jamie Hill, Caleb Hope, and Sheldon Bagri Howley for your gold medals and, of course, the Dominion Shield. Well done.
Just want to grab that trophy, Gary, and get it up the right way. Photo opportunity here. We have got one more presentation to make um, for Gary, so please don't run away. Okay, um, Gary, in winning today, you have achieved a gold star, 15 championships. Congratulations. I know you're a little uncomfortable with one of those, but um, it is there to be presented somewhere. We got that, Mike? It's on the table there, I think, Ellen, is it? Sorry. Um, so Gary Lawson, back in 1989, National Open Singles Champion representing Sydenham, 93, Open Fours Composite Team, 94, Open Fours Composite Team, 94, National Open Singles representing Carlton Cornwall. 1996 Open Fours Composite Team, which gave him a gold star for the first time. 1997 Open Fours Composite. 1997 Open Pairs Composite. 2004 National Open Fours representing Burnside. 2008 National Open Pairs representing Eastbourne. 2009 Club Fours representing Eastbourne, which gave him a gold star for 10 titles. 2010 National Open Pairs representing Eastbourne. 2011 National Open Pairs representing Sumner, 2018 National Open Pairs representing a composite side, 2018 National Open Pairs composite, and then today, of course, two, uh, 2020 National Fours champion. Gary, that is a magnificent achievement. Congratulations. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it won't be long. Um, thanks, everyone, for the for a great day. Uh, Cooney and, and the boys, you know, <laughs> it could have gone anyway. And you know, it's obviously with Scotty and Lancey there, would have been, I would have been okay if they'd have won. But um, anyway, we firstly, I'd, I'd really like to just, you know, thank my boys, the two young chaps. A eh? first title for them, and that's always the the biggest one. And and they'll, they'll they'll be here winning some more. And to the old campaigner Hilly, you know, he just trugged along nicely. Eh? It was good. Uh, to Saucy and the boys, awesome, great to see them up here, and to Shannon and his team, well, you know, at the end of the day, he sacked us last year, so it's uh, nice that he's down the other end, but uh, thanks everyone for staying, and uh, it's been awesome, and uh, really, really happy, uh, so yeah, cheers. Thanks, Gary, I think we all agree that that was a great final, well done, mate, and uh, well done to the youngsters there on the left-hand side of me, um, first title, well done, guys. Fantastic, really great. Have a fantastic evening, all of you, and have a very safe journey home. We will see you again soon, I'm sure. Cheers. That concludes our presentation here from Bowles Mount Monganui. And just a last few words in summary of these Somerset National Fours as Gary Lawson celebrates alongside Jamie Hill, Caleb Hope, and Sheldon Bagri Howley holding the Dominion Shield, presented for the first time back in 1888, presented again to the successful men's champions. Earlier today, it was Sandra Keith taking out the women's fours title along with Claire Hendra, Selena Smith, and Taylor Bruce. And Kevin Hicklin, well, it lasted some four hours, <laughs> that men's fours final, but we got there in the end. It had six replayed ends, and it had a big comeback as Gary Lawson came from behind over the closing stages to force that extra end and then well executed. And as Gary Lawson mentioned in the interview, Kevin, the, the youngsters will probably remember this more than most. The first national titles for Sheldon Bagri Howley and also Caleb Hope. Yeah, certainly a great, great honour for them to win their first ever national title. But... To me, Gary Lawson showed today on the 17th end, to me that was what he did. He was one down on the head, down on the board, and turned one down into a three-shot head for Lawson to get a one on the 18th end. And it just shows what Gary Lawson brings to the game, his passion to the game. He was encouraging his side all the way through. And, you know, Mike Kernan would have also, of course, been a deserved winner with his side. But Gary Lawson, what more can you say about the guy? He's done it all. And Sandra Keith, of course, with her win in the fours. Uh, a good win for her, but in her first national fours. But certainly a magnificent event here at Tauranga, at Mount Maunganui. And uh, what a fitting climax. 
extra in. Couldn't get any closer, could you? Yeah, absolutely. On behalf of Kevin Hicklin, Ben and Tamara, uh, thank you very much for joining us throughout the four days, and particularly these last two days of these Somerset National Fours. Make sure you have a good evening, and we'll be back next time for North, South and the National Inter Centre at the end of the month.